What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going for another go-around here of a new rebuild series titled Zero Rings to Seven Rings, where we take a team that is yet to win a Super Bowl, and this video ends once they have won their seventh Super Bowl, thus becoming the most successful franchise in the NFL. We did a first go-around with the Detroit Lions, and today we are here with the Chargers. I put up a Twitter poll, give me a follow, at PapaXC4, it's a great place to vote on content, we do Madden giveaways and stuff like that all throughout the year and code giveaways and all that good stuff. So go a little follow there, but you guys did a poll and it was 29% went for Vikings, 30% went for the Chargers. It was a very, very close decision, but we are gonna be rebuilding the Chargers here. We're gonna try to find them some path to success. And I always get this thing caught up. So we did sim through the year one so that I could get through the 2023 draft class. So we've added Quinton Johnson, uh, really was the big get from that draft class. At wide receiver, the defensive side, we got Tui Tui Pelotu, Dayon Henley. Uh, we got through some of the free agency moves. So we now have Eric Kendricks kind of wearing the green dot on the defense, being the leader of the defensive unit. And I think the the biggest challenge here, because when we did the Detroit Lions, they're a team that's already kind of on the ascension a little bit, but they still have, you know, some rebuild to them. Take a look at the Chargers. It's going to give us an entirely different dynamic. Part, first part is we clearly have our quarterback in place, but he's not under contract. Justin Herbert is going to get paid here in this very first season, and that is just going to hamper this squad. We are not going to be able to have a super team right away. I do feel like there's going to be an element that, you know, the Detroit Lions rebuild. For those of you that did watch it, this is just a refresher. For those that didn't, go check it out. But we kind of had to replace Jared Goff. That was kind of the first plane. But then like we could, we just pretty much built our team and maintained it. Maybe I had to make some tough re-sign decisions along the way, but we never really had to go through a secondary rebuild period to go and get our seven rings. I think that might be the case here because we have a lot of veterans. Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler. I mean, he's not super old, but for a running back, 28, that's pretty much the ceiling of where a running back, the wheels start to fall off just a little bit and regression happens. Mike Williams is probably super happy that we do this series with injuries turn off. But again, he's 28. He's no spring chicken. Um, Gerald Everett's 29. Corey Lindsay is what, 30, 31, 32. So, like, you're looking at the highest overall players on this offense outside of Justin Herbert. Like, you know, they they might be here for a ring, but I don't think we're going to see any of these guys here when it comes time to get, you know, Super Bowl four, Super Bowl five, Super Bowl six, and stuff like that. Whereas with the Detroit Lions, we had most of that squad together. So that's very interesting. I mean, and then you throw on the defensive side of the ball. Khalil Mack's not getting any younger. Eric Kendrick's is not getting any younger. Uh, Joseph Day's getting out there in age a little bit. So, you know, hopefully you got the Joey Bosis, the Derwin James, J.C. Jackson, Sante Samuel Jr. We can keep all those guys, hopefully, because once we pay Justin Herbert, we're going to have to likely make some very tough roster decisions going forward. I'm going to hope that we can kind of offset a little bit by getting rid of some of our veterans. Like, obviously, Khalil Mack could be a guy that's on the chopping block. He's pretty expensive. Eric Kendricks, especially. If we decide to keep Kenneth Murray, maybe we can do a Henley Murray linebacking core of the future. But, I mean, Murray, he's another guy got to get paid. Didn't get to pick up his fifth-year option. Actually, that's wrong. I picked Justin Herbert next year because I did pick up his fifth-year option. I did not pick up the fifth-year option of Kenneth Murray Jr. because that's what the Chargers did in real life, and I'm trying to have as realistic of roster expectations as we can have. But this is going to be tough. I, I think this is... I think I much would have rathered done the Minnesota Vikings from a ease standpoint because there, you you know, you got your Justin Jefferson in place. You got, like, a lot of the Vikings' best players are young and they're going to be like a nice core you can build around here with the chargers man i don't really know what we got in store but i would like to say honestly big picture i think we should be going for our first super bowl we should go for it every year but like i think this is very important to hit it this year because i think this upcoming offseason the roster could look drastically different you know who knows what we got to do with keenan allen who knows if Corey lindsey's going to retire who knows what we're going to do with khalil mack like there's an argument that like this starting year one of this series that's going to be the best this chargers team's going to be for a year or two so i think we need to capitalize on that and try to get the first super bowl rolling here in year one i'd like to thank DraftKings for sponsoring today's video and if you're anything like me you got your mind already on the football season it's july you could smell it <sighs> It's coming. It's coming up faster than you think. And you can get on the action right now with Best Ball over on my partner on DraftKings. This year, Best Ball on DraftKings has $10 million prize pool up for grabs. And all you got to do is sign up now using my promo code C4DFS and get your first $10 entry back in DK dollars 
once the draft has completed. Start playing best ball, download the DraftKings app, sign up using promo code C4DFS, enter DraftKings best ball $10 million millionaire contest, and draft your team for the season. Each week, you'll automatically rack up points from all your top scores. No ads, drops, trades, I should have played them, no worrying about the waiver wire. You'll be able to enjoy the fantasy football action without the need to manage your team. The team with the most points at the end of the season will take home the $1 million top prize. This is DraftKings' largest best ball contest ever. So what are you waiting for? Head to the DraftKings app and sign up with promo code C4DFS and start playing best ball today. Enter the DraftKings $10 million best bet contest and you'll get your first $10 entry back in DK dollars. Only on DraftKings with promo code C4DFS. A little news here. Early in year one, before it's even time to talk about contracts, JT Woods, who's a normal dev safety, gets a dev trait. Maybe more impressingly enough, on top of the 5K XP, we did it week five against the Chiefs. That's the cheat code. As we sit we 5-0 uh, and undefeated with a top five offense and the second best defense in the NFL. We'll carry this over. Uh, we're still undefeated, and JT Woods has a second dev trait scenario. So maybe playing along Derwin James is helping him elevate his game we are 10 and 0 absolutely on fire second best offense in the nfl a top five defense fire all cylinders this week we got kenny pickett and the pittsburgh steelers a matchup that we're definitely favored to win we handle business 24 20 uh, 24 17 and jt woods has got up two dev traits this season for the very i mean i'm always a big fan of him coming out of baylor and with the Sierra Adderley kind of surprisingly retiring, I think JT Woods, hell of a player, has some upside. Maybe not this kind of upside, but I'll take it in this rebuild. So we are currently 12-0 in year one of this rebuild, which is an awesome start. As good of a start as I could have possibly hoped for. Let's take a look at some contracts. This is where the downside's going to be, because yes, we're playing very well. Bad side is I don't know how we are going to be able to afford this good of a team to keep up this level. Um, so I do think we're going to have to make some tough decisions. Uh, I think knowing that we got Kendricks here, it's probably best to commit to Kenneth Murray because that's a really, really reasonable contract. For a team that I think is going to be very expensive, we can keep a dev trait linebacker who I don't think he's going to be losing that anytime soon as long as we keep getting on the field. Uh, I think we just keep on rolling. I think this is going to be just, you got to make the smart decisions and move on when you got to move on. Like Austin Eckler... That's not a brutal contract. And the fact that that is a very high interest level. That was one thing that kind of worked against us a little bit in Detroit. Is even though we were winning throughout that rebuild, a lot of our big time players had very little interest. We had to overpay. And I'm very surprised to see that here in LA. Like we could probably get Eric Kendricks back if we wanted to. The interest is there. Gerald Everett has interest. Michael Davis has interest. Like all these guys want to buy into the project. So I'll give credit to Staley here, man. He's getting the job done. He's, he's selling these guys on the project, even though we're going to have to unfortunately let a lot of them walk because we need to start preparing for next offseason or we got to pay Justin Herbert $8 trillion. Surprise, surprise, which team gave us our first loss of the season? Shocked, Kansas City Chiefs. Shockingly enough, we slip up against the Bears. Justin Fields, upset of the season. The good news is we've got the first round by. The bad news is that in classic Chargers fashion, we're fizzling late in the season, losing two of our final three games to finish 14-3. and three. Still good enough to be the one seed in the AFC. Still good enough to be the top record in the NFL, which is a big win for us. But let's take a look at our stats. Justin Herbert played pretty well. I think he was like a top. He was in the top three passing leaders for most of the season. It's a little annoying that he dropped off there a little bit. We still had a big time year. He had 8th in yards, 39 touchdowns, 12 picks. Now, he is a guy that I would love to see earn an X-Factor. Don't know if we'll hit it off of this season. May he's like kind of right on that line. I'm going to say that he probably won't. A little bit high in the interceptions. Around the ball, 1,400 yards, 15 touchdowns. Austin Eckler, great. We had 1,400 yards, 12 touchdowns for Keenan Allen. Thrive in the, in the slot. Joel Everett with a decent year. Quentin Johnson with a decent year. Very disappointing for Mike Williams. Uh, maybe something to keep an eye on, man. Maybe this is going to be a slot-fed offense. Maybe it's not just a just a highlight of Keenan Allen's talent, but maybe this is going to be a thing where like we want our number one wide receiver to kind of go in the slot so that they get the most of the targets. Would be nice to see though, like a couple hundred, you know, given the year that Justin Herbert had, forty-eight hundred yards passing. 
I, you know what? I personally, I don't like to diversify that much, but I mean, this is also always a playbook that's going to feature a lot of catches and numbers going to the running back. So maybe that's why, like in a lot of other hunts, you may only get like two, 300 yards. And that can make the difference of Mike Williams having, you know, 768 and just getting over a thousand or something like that. Um, defensively, Garrick Hendricks, over 100 tackles, four interceptions, four sacks. Great year. Khalil Mack, 18 sacks, 13 from uh, Joey Bosa. And we got four picks, Kendricks, four picks, Asante Samuel, a couple doubles there, 70 tackles, two picks for our new superstar safety, JT Woods. Maybe you want to see a little bit better production out of Derwin James, only one interception, 74 tackles, four PBUs. One of the yearly awards, MVP goes to Lamar Jackson. We got Justin Herbert coming in at number eight. And for individual awards, look for our beloved Chargers. Khalil Mack coming in number four from Defensive Rookie of the Year. Quinn Johnson, third place for Offensive Rookie of the Year. We have Justin Herbert just in the top five for top quarterbacks. Austin Eckler at number three. Keenan Allen. Wow, Devin Duvernay. That is an interesting name to see all the way up there. Uh, Khalil Mack running out for Best Linebacker of the Year. Tante Samuel, top five for DB of the year. Where's the dicker, the kicker, love? Way down there at number six. But this is definitely much more of a collective effort than it was an individual effort as our team was really good. Not a lot of individual accolades, but that's fine because it's all about stacking Super Bowls. This isn't the zero MVPs to 20 MVP rebuild. We need to chase those rings and things start here in the divisional round against Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns. Should be winnable. Not always a gimme. He was close. Closer than I would have expected. 24-21. And we're going to have to run through the AFC North here as the Ravens, MVP Lamar, taking them very, very tight match. A very close race here in the AFC. Not so much in the NFC. Look at the Rams just pummeled the Cowboys. Giants beat the 49ers. Let's take a look at our box score here. See who did what. Really, we just let them get back into it late. Not a particularly great game from Justin Herbert. Needs to be said, but I think getting that first playoff victory is going to be huge. Austin Eckler had a big game. Gerald Everett, who's set to become a free agent, had a big game. Eric Kendricks, who's set to become a free agent, had a really good game. I'm almost... Kendricks was really good this season. I'm almost thinking we need to resign. I don't know. We can't. I don't. I just don't think we can. It'd be short-sighted to resign him, but he's playing awesome. He deserves a contract to stay here in L.A. But the future, Henley, cheap, affordable. Kenneth Murray, that contract was too good to pass up. I think we're gonna. I think we just we gotta we gotta just make the right call there. Austin Eckler was Player of the Week, which is pretty cool. We'll take that. I don't know if that's any extra XP or anything. Well, it usually is a couple extra bucks there in terms of the XP. Let's spend our upgrades before we get our matchup here against Baltimore. Super Bowl on the line. You know, we 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 hyped it up coming into this. We'll just we'll just get Quentin Johnson here. Now let's spend Josh Palmer. I, it, it it's maybe anti patriotic for me to try to ship him off, but I think there's definitely with Quentin Johnson coming in. It's going to come to that point where, like, are we going to be able to hold on? Josh Palmer's going to be nice to have if we have, like, a surprise Keenan Allen retirement. Or if we have to decide we're not going to pay Mike Williams. But I think his contract's getting ready to come up next year or a year or two. And are we going to be able to pay him while having Quentin Johnson, Keenan Allen, and Mike Williams still on the roster? So we got to make a tough decision there because I do think there's some trade value if we do decide to move on. But we have Baltimore standing in our way of a year one Super Bowl. And to get back to my opening little talking point there is like I think this team needs to win a Super Bowl if we're going for seven this is a very good team this is a team that's talented enough to win a Super Bowl and what stands before us is a terrible Rams team how are the Rams here Rams are one of the worst hardest rebuild teams going on and they put up 49 and 38 points we'll get a little scouting report there ahead of the Super Bowl let's focus on an epic AFC championship game which we defeat the Baltimore Ravens 41 to 38 in a game that both quarterbacks were absolutely lights up, but almost 400 yards, four touchdowns, no picks from Justin Herbert. That's going to that's gonna seal the deal. Keenan Allen, buck 71, two tutties. Mike Williams had a good game. Gerald Everett, double touchdowns. Defensively, Khalil Mack got a sack. Uh, Tui Tui Pelotu got a sack. And that is all we need to hear. It's a battle of California for the Super Bowl. So let's see what the heck's going on with this Rams team. Tenet, they're an 80 overall, which is below 80 offense. 79 offense making the Super Bowl. Aaron Donald's obviously incredible. They have a top 10 defense. But, you know, unless, like, they must have just got, I mean, they're, they're a decent sim team. So are we. I, you know, I've seen the Chargers go on and, and have some decent success. 
Bad Stafford at quarterback, Cam Akers. We all know Cooper Cup is S tier. He's probably he's the best sim wide receiver in Madden. And I don't want to give you a spoiler, but I think he's gonna be the best sim wide receiver in Madden 24. Uh, but the rest of the team, like that offensive line, is bang on, not good at all. The defense is pretty much looking at the front seven here. I mean, okay, they got uh, Inudike Zuma from K State in the draft, but you know, you got you got three guys. We'll get, if we'll, if we're gonna count him as a player, you got him, Bobby Wagner, Aaron Donald on the defense. They didn't trade Jalen Ramsey. I guess they got that going. So they got a couple stars sprinkled in with the best sim wide receiver, and that's about all they got going for us. But I, I think this needs to be this needs to be considered. You're not gonna you're not playing Dallas. We're not playing Tampa. We're not playing Philly. We're not playing any of the, the stupid hard teams to try to beat. We got the freaking Rams. This has to be Super Bowl one of seven, fellas. This is a matchup. Stars against team. This is like almost everything a rebuild comes down to. I have the best team. I have the most competitive roster. I have the most complete roster. This is a team that has mismanaged their salary cap and can only afford a couple S-tier players. We need to show that, the, you know, building a roster, flushing out a full roster is how you win. A Super Bowl and not just acquiring a couple stars not fancy football but we are struggling here a little about that right now I'll come in on this third down because we need a score here and not necessarily I need to get this one in the end zone but let's at least get the first down move the chains we got ew, not the biggest fan of all these reds but look at that right there boom Keenan Allen he is our go-to he was easily wide receiver one on a year that I think that would be like our only disappointment is that no one else really ate on this offense? Mike Williams had a little, didn't have a great year. Quentin Johnson didn't have the best of years. I mean, Austin Eckler wasn't too bad, all things considered, but it also wasn't great. We're going to come here on third and four. Another priority throw here to Keenan Allen if we can get it. We got Quentin Johnson, got the tough task of going up against Jalen Ramsey. So he's pretty much going to be a decoy. I don't think we're going to be throwing to him anyway, but look at that. We got the inside. We go to Keenan. He throws a stiff arm, very physical wide receiver. Many people don't know. Remember Keenan Allen? I'm pretty sure he's recruited in college to Cal as a safety. So he's a little bit of that, that defensive dog in him a little bit. As we're able to cap that drive off with a touchdown, Rams go down the field, score their touchdown. We're going back in the red zone. That was a turnover. What happened there? How do you, we were in the red zone and we turned the football over. We do get the touchdown. We get a stop here. It's going to be over. Matt Stafford, Cooper Cup. They go all the way downfield into field goal range. Third down. Fourth down, they're going for it. They don't get it. Game over. Year one Super Bowl for the Chargers. I'm not going to get super hyped because this is a very good roster. This is a roster that if this was year four or five, I'd be expecting a Super Bowl. Just because we're starting at a really good talented point for this rebuild of the Chargers, I said that it's not going to be like the Detroit Lions. This is a different perspective of a zero rings to seven ring series because I think we're taking over a contender right now that's been out of performing in real life, but the talent exists. And we're able to kind of harvest that talent a little bit for a year one Super Bowl. The challenge is going to be next. I mean, we might be competitive this upcoming year too. This could be a nice two-year window to stack some Super Bowls. But it's going to be after we pay Justin Herbert. And we're going to have the regression of Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Corey Lindsey, Khalil Mack. Bosa might start seeing a little bit. How are we going to handle that? Because I think there might be a little bit of a rebuild within a rebuild that we need to handle here. But for Justin Herbert to get that first ring... In year one, that is how you start this freaking thing off and give him the MVP. 315 yards passing, four touchdowns. What a dog. We close out year one as Super Bowl champions. Just get an idea of where the dev traits are at. Quentin Johnson was our hit dev rookie that popped with a start. No other dev traits up or down on the offensive side. Defensively, well, we kind of broke even at the state room as both Derwin James lost a dev, but we gained that dev on JT Wood, so they're both stuck at Superstar. I'm not going to really complain too much about it because Derwin James was a little underperforming, so I'm not going to be like, oh, how'd you get rid of his X-Factor? We did lose the Superstar dev on JC Jackson, which I think is, is just considering in real life did not have the best first year with the Chargers even before his injury. But no other dev traits up or down. Uh, that's a lie. Khalil Mack up to an X-Factor. So now we're going into next year trying to repeat as Super Bowl champion with two X-Factor pass rushers and arguably one of the best quarterbacks, I'd say a top three quarterback right now in this sim in Justin Herbert. A theme in our first 0-7 rebuild with the Detroit Lions was not spending in free agency. Now, I needed a tight end after we let Gerald Everett walk. And I can't really get in a bidding war with Gerald Everett. I know it's a weak draft class for tight ends. 
So I'm going to throw a one-year deal at Tyler Higby just because there doesn't seem to be any competition right now versus getting into a bidding war with Gerald Everett. I think they both have similar type floors. And we're going to gamble that uh, Makai Becton will choose the good guys and reach his full potential here. And if not, I mean, why wouldn't you want to join the team that just won the Super Bowl? So swing. We got Higby as a Band-Aid at tight end. And we got a long-term hopeful franchise right tackle. Makai Becton on one side, Rashawn Slater on the other to keep up Justin Herbert for six more Super Bowls. Right now, usually after winning a Super Bowl, I'm not gonna be super aggressive in the draft. We have a low draft pick, but look at what we found here. Not, not one of the top five picks. Nothing like, it's just, I don't know why and how. Like, look, we just keep going, we keep going. There's a corner, let's find the first corner. Look at this, Deshaun Harper. Four A's, top scheme fit for us. Elite speed, jumping, agility, and acceleration. And I'm like, all right, well, this guy here is clearly one of the best players in the draft. It's honestly like a Derwin James situation. Where like many people thought when Derwin James came out, like there's no way this guy's gonna fall. Look at this. He's out of the top 10. He's going at pick 11. I'm going to try to get this guy. I had to overpay, potentially, maybe not. I gave, uh, to move up 22 spots, I had to give up our first round pick, Josh Palmer who in this scenario, they did not get Jackson Smith and Jigba, so they very much need that wide receiver three. He's 24 years old, and their top need was center. So I actually threw in a sec, originally I tried to get it with a second round pick. First second round pick, Josh Palmer wasn't enough. It was like middle. Their top need is center. Corey Lindsay is like the third highest rated center, fourth highest rated center in the league. He's a veteran. They took that deal. It definitely creates a hole for us because now I'm gonna have to find a replacement for a very, very good center. But I think given his age, I I might have got out on that one. I don't know what the value is of like a 32-year-old center, even if he's very good. But if they get another three, four, five years out of him, maybe that's the case. I'm not going to make too much of an argument. I still think at the end of the day, that was a that was a pretty reasonable trade. And it's going to allow us to be aggressive and to get... I, I don't know. Like I almost feel like we need to reward ourselves. If everyone else is passing on a guy that's clearly a top five talent, maybe even top three, get all that he has the like sometimes you'll see guys that have the four a's four a's is not like a unicorn for corners but have four a's and also be the best athlete of the draft class can't miss player Deshaun harper i don't he's gonna be what like 81 82 thank you and look at 5 11 210 he probably plays safety up next we're gonna grab nose tackle usually a very high success rate that these guys are gonna be pretty good double c with a b he also threw up 46 reps on the bench press. Elite strength, 99 strength, hidden dev, Jerome Booth. We traded Corey Lindsay without really having a replacement at center. And the really last draftable center of the draft class is Matt Wheeler at a K-State. Double B in the A impact block, but he has so he's good stats. Stats don't really matter. Combine's okay. No dev traits, but he's likely gonna be our starter. Luckily, center is probably the least important position in a Madden Sim on the offensive line. It's gonna be a moment to choose. What kind of player did we just sabotage our offense a little bit to get? And I, I can live with that. I can live with that all damn day. Deshaun Harper. I mean, now if that's a star dev, might sting a little bit because this looks like we got a generational type player. 84 hidden dev, top five. It was first round. He was projected to go outside of the top 10. We leave Frog 97 speed, 95 acceleration, 96 agility. Just a ridiculous player. 79 catching. He's got to be, I, I'm going to say right now, I, he has to be X Factor. If he's not X Factor, I'll be absolutely shocked. This guy's the profile of an X Factor. This guy's the profile of a generational player. And we're going to be able to pair him back there with JC Jackson, with Asante Samuel Jr. Might make him one of those guys expendable if salary gets a little tight. Uh, Jerome Booth, nose tackle, 73. He's going to be a day one starter for us as well. It's a big time get him and Joseph Day and Tui Pelotu will make up our front three. Wheeler, I thought was going to be a lot better than a 66. But we're about to just, you know what? At the end of the day, trading a really good veteran center. You know, Josh Palmer, maybe it's unpatriotic here. But trading like a really good veteran center and your depth wide receiver to get hopefully a generational player. You make that every day of the week. And it never was in doubt, was it? The shot Harper, welcome to Los Angeles. Welcome to the defending Super Bowl champions. Here to year two at our bye week eight and one with our one loss coming fairly early against the Denver Broncos, oddly enough, um, who are last in the division. So it lets us know that even if we're riding high, 
Anybody can beat this team on any given day. It's not an unstoppable squad. You need to keep that in mind in case we run into like an 8-9 playoff team or something crazy like that. But we need to focus right now less on the record and more on the available salary cap as we got to talk about some contracts here. None more bigger than the franchise. And uh, that's obviously our future salary cap, I believe, with $141 million. We have got to be able to secure the services of Justin Herbert. Honestly, at this price point, give him seven. Let's give him seven. Lock in gives us the rest of the money and room that we need to figure out that we have to work with. Um, I mean, looking at who we got, I like Dicker the kicker. I'll probably give. I like him as a kicker. That's funny. He was here with Philly. Worked out pretty well. Uh, Sebastian Joseph today. We could definitely upgrade upon Tyler Higby's a band aid. Khalil Mack. For how he's playing, like where's he at this year? Last year he's really good. Had a bunch of sacks, played above his rating. There's gonna be some regression, but the fact that midway, like he's gonna get double digits, paying eight million dollars, less than ten for a guy that can get double digits, even if he regressed down to like an 80, 79, 80, maybe even just a superstar. I still think that's definitely worth the price. Asante Samuel, uh, I think of him more so a long-term uh, partner with. The corner we just drafted, maybe more so than JC Jackson. So we're going to get Asante Samuel locked in. $77 million remaining. Now, this is where the tough question comes in. Mike Williams, Keenan Allen. I'm going to go Keenan Allen first because he has the X factor. That's two dev trait regressions that he has to the good versus Mike Williams, who, I mean, both these guys are in the area code of regressing. And I, I think with someone like Mike Williams... I want to see what he does. If he hits 1,000 this year, if he has a respectable season, because last year was all about Keenan Allen. If Mike Williams has a respectable season, not saying he needs to go off enough to get a dev trade increase, but, I mean, we'll resign him. But I, I think the sentiment of most Charger fans, there's a reason why they drafted Quentin Johnson, who has a similar profile of Mike Williams. Maybe not the same jump ball ability. Like, Mike Williams, when healthy, he's one of the best jump ball receivers in the NFL. But I think there's definitely a sentiment of frustration with Mike Williams because he's just always hurt. He's always hurt. You can never rely on him. So, given that he's 29 years old, like we might be able to spend that $38 million and get a younger wide receiver that might be able to offer more than Mike Williams because this is a long-term rebuild. This is not a five-year cap where we need to just be like, oh, let's be competitive for the next five years. We get, we're probably going to go a lot longer than that. So, Mike Williams' contract, I, I don't want two old wide receivers. I'd rather go Keenan Allen, but I will say Mike Williams can earn himself a contract at season's end if he goes off this year. Year two for our Chargers as defending Super Bowl champions goes the same as year one. Identical 14-3 and records. I'll tell you right now, that loss week 18, 35-30 over the Ravens was rough as they had four wins. That was their fifth win of the year. They're firmly outside of the playoff race. But we're not going to let, you know what, in, in hype, in theory, we already had the one seed locked up. We rested our guys. That's how we justify that. We had a six offense in the NFL, fifth defense, number one rushing. I will say I hate the fact, no matter how good my team is, I always have pretty much a bad passing defense. Which shouldn't happen because I have one of the best secondaries in the NFL. So that's kind of annoying. Uh, Justin Herbert played well. Not playing like an MVP, but playing very well. 4,600 yards, 34 touchdowns, 6 picks. Cut his interceptions in half from a year ago. 1,500 yards, 14 touchdowns from Eckler. Decent years. Spillers, RB2. 11-9 for Keenan Allen. 11-5 for Mike Williams. Higby was solid. Quentin Johnson was solid. I might, have to, I might have to pay Mike Williams. Six, uh, over 100 tackles for Kenneth Murray. Two interceptions. 10 half sacks for Mac, Nine and a half from Joey Bosa. I'm not going to lie. They're too expensive to have those inner well, uh, really underwhelming level of sack totals. Aaron Rodgers MVP still there. Whoa, Lamar in Chicago. Okay. Pretty interesting landing spots there. Josh Everett comes number seven in the MVP race. Looking for some chargers. Ooh. I mean, Deshaun Harper coming in number four. I mean, he's already an X-Factor, so don't really need that extra little push that you get from winning that award, but still would have been nice. And uh, we didn't have any award winners. Okay, very similar to last year. Last year, we went on and won the Super Bowl. We didn't have anybody that won an award. This year, we are the one seed, back-to-back -back years. Didn't have anybody win an award, which is fine, because you know what? I will take a breakout D lineman in the playoffs, and it's Tuli Tupolochu, part of that 20... 23 draft class out of USC, looking to become a star dev. Hold the Raiders less than 100 yards rushing and have him a good day. I'll take that. We need that. There's a little bit of divisional rivalry. I mean, from some of the outside looking in, I never really thought that, like, even when they were in Oakland, there was, like, that big of a rivalry between the Raiders and Chargers. Maybe there is, and it's just something I'm oblivious to. Uh, but I think outside of just being a divisional rivalry, it doesn't strike me as one of the top. And we own them. 41-24. 
We got the Bengals who beat us in the regular season. Let's see if we hit that breakup for Tui Tupelo too. We did, which is awesome. That's free right there. That's free. We didn't make the playoffs. We didn't have that opportunity to arise. But because we're a playoff team, a team full of dogs, able to get it, we have the Cincinnati Bengals up next, 12 and 5. Can they beat us twice? Are they our kryptonite this year? Which they are! Wow! I thought, honestly, we'd get two quick Super Bowls to start this thing off. The Bengals pull the double over on us. They beat us in the regular season. They beat us to go to the Super Bowl. That would have been an awesome matchup against Lamar Jackson and the Bears. And in a game that both neither quarterback really played particularly well. Like, honestly, it was close. I think the argument, their big dogs went off. 89 yards, two touchdowns, Tyler Boyd. 98 yards, Jamar Chase. Our really, Quentin Johnson's our wide receiver three. He's the guy that thrived. Mike Williams is trying to justify that contract. 53 yards, two touchdowns after already getting 1,000 during the season. Two sacks, Joey Bosa. JT Woods had a pick. Mike Hilton had a pick. It was That's just a close game, man. The two really, really good teams. The one seed and the three seed. But definitely feels like a missed opportunity. Given, you know, there's there's windows in these things. Windows of opportunity. And this was definitely a window of opportunity for us to get that second Super Bowl. You need to hire a new offensive coordinator. So, I mean, I might, you know, we'll see if we can maybe get a nice little cheesy playbook here if one exists. If not, I will, I will take the coward way out and just keep it as is, as the Chargers. I, I mean, Carolina playbook. Probably not that bad, given the fact that the Carolina Pan uh, the Panthers playbook really does run through, you know, the, the idea that Christian Caffrey's on the team. That would work well with Austin Eckler here. Not so much the Rams. Rams don't really have an overpowered playbook, I don't think. That's, again, very similar. I think the slot wide receiver eats in the Rams playbook. That's why Cooper Cup's a god. And that, that again, kind of fits one of our bet. Like, but the argument is trying to do something different. And what I see here, right now our offense is like, you know, a lot of slot wide receiver, which this would be. A lot of Austin Eckler running and catching, which this would be. Or we just have the West Coast. I think we'll go West Coast and just keep it as is. Charger playbook right now this year. All right, he called my bluff. This might pay me. I, I, I'm, he, it's yellow. It's not a for sure thing he'll sign, but I'll offer him at least his contract. Mike Williams hit the goal, and he still he wants to cash out. And I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Going to free agency. Our two needs kind of coming in is wide receiver, because now we have to replace Mike Williams. And tight end, because we just had Higby as a Band-Aid. And the top wide receiver is available is Mike Williams. And beyond that, it's a lot of veterans that I don't think, given the state of our roster, like, oh, the next young guy is Josh Palmer, who we let walk. And the top tight end is still pretty much Tyler Higby. So I think we're going to... I mean, Tremble could be interesting. But I don't know if that's much more interesting than just trying to draft a tight end, trying to find... Because I could probably find a tight end that's at least going to be a 70, you know, I feel like, if, I, if I'm going aggressively after a tight end. Um, so that's kind of that. I mean, there's some nice players in this year's free agency class. Like, Suell is there. Maybe if I could do it all again, I'd rather Suell than Beckton. But then again, Beckton was a lot more affordable. So, I mean, edge rusher. We're not getting any younger. Aziz Ojolari. He's probably the top guy that I'm on the fence. But we still have Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa under contract. So there's just too much money, too much of an investment for Ojolari to come here and just sit behind those guys for where we decide to move on. So I think this, it's not a terrible problem to have. You know, maybe kind of coming in below our target year two of winning the Super Bowl. Being like, all right, we don't need to rebuild. We're going to run it back. And not only that, we're going to keep most of the roster together. And we have almost eight to $90 million worth of salary cap. Let's go do our work here during the draft. Let's look at wide receiver. Hopefully we can land a tight end. And we'll have plenty of money to re-sign our in-house free agents next year. All right, so looking at our draft board here, three players that I really keyed in on for our first pick. We have Elijah Rainey, at D-Tackle. He would kick over to defensive end and be our Sebastian Joseph Day replacement. He actually looks awesome. Like, I was pretty sure I wanted to go tight end or wide receiver in the first round, but the tight end value doesn't seem to be early. Uh, Dan Devine just has, you know, at least he has the A catching traffic. Tyron Bailey has the A catch traffic B deep. Uh, Carl Weiss has the A catching. We got Ben Emery here, who I, I, I tried to take, a, you know, the best combine, A catching, B deep. Right? Like, it looks solid. I think that's going to be, like, where we can get our value at tight end. I did also fully scout a wide receiver, and we have Kevin McLean, the deep threat, who has a first-round talent. So the question is, what's going to be more valuable to our team? Wide receiver, that looks solid, pretty good. We know he's going to be uh, have a decent base. Or do I, do I hope that I can find, like, there's other deep threat, Guys that look like look like they could they could definitely play a part in this roster uh, down into day three, and I don't I don't know if we're gonna be able to find that that D lineman. 
That's like that's really good base. Great athlete, A power, B finesse, B tackle. C blocks it's fine, but he's more of a pass rusher than he's a run stuffer. We don't need really need help. I think push comes to shove. I'm gonna get rainy. He paused for the depth. I think I think that's gonna be the best call, and hopefully we can find a wide receiver later on. There's still being such a log jam at tight end. I almost kind of feel like like whichever one of these guys falls to me, I feel like I'd be the most like if if Divine, Bailey are gone, Wise and Emery, or if well, you know, whoever, whatever combination is available in the third round. I feel like maybe that's where we'll go. I'm looking here at the centers. There's two very viable centers still drafted. Uh, we have Brent McCullough, who has the A, B, B, double Bs. Looks solid. Again, remember, our last center was not particularly good. Elite acceleration, elite jumping. That looks pretty good to go with the combine. Callum, McGeg uh, Callum Gregory has A awareness, B run block. And pretty good. Not as good. So it's almost like, where's the value going to be? But I feel like because there's only really two centers and there's like four tight ends that I think I'd be good with. We'll grab the center now. And yes, we get the perfect roll. Oh, when in doubt, go with the best combine. And hopefully round three, there's still a tight end or two to pick from. Man, we risk, we got burned. We got absolutely burned here. Oh, all of them are gone. Oh, there's five guys I would have liked to take. Uh, Deshaun Hines is a run block. Oh, this guy sucks too, man. I don't know. We might just have to rock and roll with something else. There's not... Mike Thompson has BK. We got burned. I'm not going to be super critical, so we just got a hidden dev. Like, if we would have got a normal dev tight end versus a hidden dev center, I'd probably take the center, even though maybe tight ends are a little bit more valuable. This guy doesn't look bad. Guess we'll pull the trigger. Ian Sullivan? Play right now. He's undrafted, projected to be UDFA. I, I was like, I need to get a wide receiver here. And the, the trope. Get a deep threat wide receiver that has at least B deep red running. If you can find that, you're gonna find a guy that's gonna be at least a 70. And that's what we have here in Brandon Gentry. Actually, honestly, that guy should be drafted. All C's with a B deep red running, runs in the four threes. And I don't need him to be hidden dev, but like I, I bet you this guy's gonna be a 70 overall at least. We got something crazy here. I couldn't get Dicker the kicker back. So we got Ramon McAllister out of Baylor. A kick accuracy. Elite kick power, elite strength, elite change of direction. Bet this guy's gonna be probably pretty freaking solid. 99 kick power. Let's go. And take a look at our draft class. Bummed we didn't grab a tight end, but all things considered, we got Elijah Rainey, 75. Wonder if that rating, he's a power rusher, so it's, it's what we're looking for in our scheme. But I wonder if that rating's gonna jump up any. We'll make him left defensive end for Joseph Day. Tua Pelotu got his dev trait during the playoffs last year. So that, that's going to be our, our tandem there. And I love that pick. McCall is going to be our day one starter at center. Hit it F72. So, yeah. Just burned it. Burned on the tight end. That sucks. But look at that value. This guy's UDFA grade. 72 Brandon Gentry. Deep threat archetypes with at least B deep route running. You're going to be getting a solid player. Look at the special teams. You know, he finished the draft. Max Schmidt, 72 punter. But Re Ramon McAllister, it might be a generational kicker. I'm, I'm going to have to sneak a peek here during the training. What the dev trade is. If it's superstar, we get our Justin Tucker. 99 kick power, 85 accuracy. The awareness sucks, but that's pretty much you know a given at this point. But we got straight up drafted a top 10 kicker in the league. As much as I would have liked to retain Dicker the kicker, that's just... I'm not going to gloat too much about this. Drafting kickers and punters, easiest thing to do. If you're, if you're still watching my content and you don't know how to draft these guys, shame on you. Because they tell you all the information. You get to find out what their accuracy is. And then when you inspect the player, it tells you what their kick power rating is going to be. So Schmidt here had B kick accuracy and great kick power. 72. McAllister had A kick accuracy, Ely kick power. Got to be incredible. So if you ever in your draft, especially fantasy drafts, multi-user leagues, and you need a kicker or punter, like they are the easiest players to draft. And it might be like a little thing you could pick up that people that don't watch content like this might miss out on. But very happy with this draft class, even with the absolute whiff at the tight end position. We've had some roster turnover. Let's take a look at the squad going into year and number three. And on the offense, clear strengths and weaknesses. Strengths is everything that's not wide receiver three and tight end. Shout out to Donald Parham, an absolute pink slips legend. I actually it would be cool for him to kind of pop off here, but... Uh, definitely not necessarily as strong as we have been. Justin Herbert is, I'm not going to say stolid, but I thought he'd be like a little bit better than a 93 superstar coming into year three, but it's a work in progress. Definitely a work in progress. Offensive line looks nice. McCullough, our second round pick, upgraded center. We used 
the coaching tree skill to unveil his depth rate. It's a star. So, I mean, the O-line is feeling really, really good. Definitely a Super Bowl caliber offense. Defensively, front three looks great. Rainy 75 hidden dev. We got Booth and Tui Pelotu. Now I am going to be a little bit worried. Joey Bosa's lost his X Factor. He's starting to regress. Khalil Max already on that regression train. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel like you got to suck to get like good edge rushing prospects. Good edge rushing prospects don't really follow the top 15, top 10 picks. And I don't think our team's going to be bad enough to be getting those. So I, I do think it's going to be tough to replace, especially like Khalil Mack. This is likely going to be like his first final season here with the with the chargers we're gonna need to find a place it might be beneficial we might need to prioritize you know free agency we find like a really good edge rusher in free agency maybe we need to jump on that this is gonna be really difficult to draft and where we're gonna be picking uh woods derwin james asante samuel jc jackson and our x factor deshaun harper make up in my opinion the best secondary in the nfl so i definitely think we're super bowl contenders this year maybe even super bowl favorites but after crashing and burning last year oh and two against the Bengals, we got a work cut out for us here in year three here in year three, still maintaining our stronghold atop the AFC West. Six and two. Raiders are pretty solid. You can never count out the Kansas City Chiefs, but I'm happy with our start here. Let's look at some contracts. $107 million available. Up first, we have Bosa. We'll get him on this three-year deal. Pretty reasonable. 61 million bucks. Uh, we got Rashawn Slater. Now, this is our first player that I think we've ever had in this rebuild that has like this no interest in re-signing. And of course, one of the most important players. I think we break the bank. We offer him very friendly six year and he needs even more. But this is a guy that has 99 overall potential at an incredibly important position at left tackle. Khalil Mack still looking for one year deals. Still you know, fairly solid. We got JT Woods here at safety. And we offer him a player friendly. Remember he had that superstar in one year. I want to keep him here. I feel like he's one of those gems that, you know, not everybody that does a Chargers rebuild is going to have JT Woods go off like he did for us. Uh, we got Sawyer. I think there's there's immense value here. So we'll literally kick this kid down the road. Seven seasons. Anytime you get that role, you do that. Because the next contract, it's not going to be that cheap. Uh, you know, I, I really think, you know, Khalil Mack, that's an interesting one. Because I feel like this might be the year you want to try to move on from him. But, I mean, we'll see. I'll put the same kind of restrictions we put on Mike Williams a year ago. If Khalil Mack gets double-digit sacks... We'll offer this contract. If not, hopefully we can get someone that's, you know, six, seven years younger and can be our more long-term option on the other side of Joey Bosa. And 100%, we're going to return to the negotiation table with Rashawn Slater. Had out about $2 million to sweeten the pot, but we got Rashawn Slater on a six-year contract. Forget about it. Year three for the Chargers, and it is three straight seasons of 14-3. Remind me of, like, peak Phillip Rivers LT years with the Chargers. I felt like they are always... One of, if not the best teams in the AFC. Like, you think of Peyton Manning and the Colts. You think of Tom Brady and the Patriots. But, like, along that, like, you almost might argue, you know, you know, the Steelers were there as well. But, like, the Chargers were, like, an underrated team. It's probably because they didn't have the postseason success to really carry all that weight. But, like, I always felt like the Chargers were really, really, really good back in the day. Never got it. At least we got their first Super Bowl of the way. But this is still a very good window for this team to get that second of seven Super Bowl goal that we're trying to hit. We have the number three offense in the league this year. The number one overall defense we're going to be very very difficult to beat looking at the offense i will say i hope that we go far enough so we can get another role at an oc I, I think i want to explore another offense outside of this charger offense because i feel like it's hindering justin herbert here just a little bit still not a bad year but like i know justin herbert's the kind of guy that can play like an mvp and we haven't really got that play out of him just quite yet uh run the ball nice season there from austin eckler and isaiah spiller good one two punch 1200 almost 1300 yards 12 touches for keenan allen 11-5 for our rookie Gentry, who was a projected UDFA. He might get Offensive Rookie of the Year shot. If he does get that role, that'd be dope, because that means he would be a star dev. Power him with a nice season. Uh, Quentin Johnson with a side. He's a guy we got to get going. First-round pick needs to pick up. You know, he was a guy that was expected to take over from Mike Williams in terms of production, and it really was like the two unknowns. Our, our, our surprising wide receiver three, and Donald Parham, who's our only our starting tight end because we had nobody else. We might have to throw a contract at Prime. What a year, honestly. Those are really, really good numbers. Defensively, Kenneth Murray over 100 tackles. The sacks are back on top. 17 for Joey Bosa, 14 for Khalil Mack, which meets the parameters I set for him to get a new contract. We'll throw him another one year. Two below two with nine and a half. Nine and a half from the rookie Elijah Rainey, who is just a startup. That's fine. I'm not going to hold that against him too, too much. Plus, with that kind of production, might put himself in defensive rookie of the year conversation, which would then yield likely... A superstar dev. Derwin James, look at the team with six picks. Three from JT Woods. Just a really, really good secondary. 
Uh, Deshaun Harper, our generational talent, up to a 92 overall lockdown. Teams are not really throwing the football. They can't run against us. There's a reason why we have the number one defense in the NFL. MVP goes to Will Levis on the Commanders. That's pretty interesting. Looking for some Chargers here. We got Defensive Rookie of the Year in Elijah Rainey. Love seeing that. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Gentry was a runner-up. Uh, quarterback, wide well, receiver. Yeah, I don't think we're really going to have anybody in any of these categories outside of Derwin James, who honestly has been, you know, I want to say he's borderline depressingly losing dev trades. Was an X Factor, now a superstar. Now he's down to a star dev. But I, I think we're going to at least get that Goldie Boy back on Derwin James as we sit here, kick our feet up during the wild card round, await our opponent. And I feel more confident this year than I did any of the previous two that we're going to go on. And I'm not going to say win the Super Bowl, but I think we are firmly the team to beat in the league right now. Up first, we have the Baltimore Ravens, who are not Lamar Jackson-led, as he has gone to the Bears in this world. So I don't even care who their quarterback is. They're probably going to have a rough time. It actually wasn't that rough of a time. Close game, 28-25. We'd handle our business, and it's a divisional matchup against us and the Raiders. I think we've been beating the Raiders more often than not. But let's focus on the recap here. Justin Herbert, really strong game. Austin Eckler was nice. Really, all of our role, and Par I mean, I'm telling you right now, Parham and Khalil Mack need to get themselves some contract extensions before we hit the offseason. Joey Bosa had a pick and a sack. I'm not the biggest fan of the Bosa brothers, but hell of a game from him as it sets up a bitter. Even though I, I said I didn't really think it was that much of a rivalry. You know, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm just sleeping on the Chargers-Raiders rivalry. Under the hood here, the Raiders have the number eight offense. That's really all they got going for them. And I, I mean, they're a very good sim team. I will say the first year that I had to replace my offensive coordinator, I thought about bringing in a Vegas one. Like that, if I go back in time, I would have done that because I think the Vegas Raiders offense here in LA would be awesome. But look at that. That is the defense of a future champion, if I do say so myself. 38 to 7. All they had going for them was their offense. And look, they, Davis Mills, he got absolutely cooked. Wasn't a perfect game from Justin Herbert, but he did enough. Three touchdowns from Austin Eckler. Another huge performance. Keenan Allen. Deshaun Harper with a pick. J.C. Jackson with a pick. Just too much. Joey Bosa, two sacks. Defense showed up. Would it matter? And it's a Super Bowl matchup between the team that almost got rebuilt today and the team that we choose. This is going to be a little bit like, did we make the right call? It is going to be the Chargers. It is going to be the Vikings. A first Super Bowl on the line for Minnesota. A second Super Bowl on the line for the Chargers. Looking at the tail of the tape, they got a top 10 passing offense. Top 10 passing defense, top five passing defense. But other than that, man, like this gotta be, this gotta be a dub for us. Another upgrade here for Rainey, the defensive rookie of the year. He's on a star, looking for a superstar, and we get it. Kind of peeking at the rest of the roster here. Austin Eckler lost his superstar. Parham gained a dev trade up to a star. Nothing else up or down on the offense, which I mean again, that's, that's a bummer for Eckler to lose his dev. Rainey gained a superstar. Derwin James got his superstar back. No other dev traits up or down ahead of the Super Bowl matchup. We got a great opportunity here, and I'm going to say pretty much any Super Bowl that we make that we aren't playing the Cowboys or the Buccaneers because those are the two teams you never, ever want to play. And we are off to a great start. Two touchdowns in the first. Minnesota kicks off the second by getting a touchdown. We are scored points on all of our drives. I would actually love to win the Super Bowl with having to hop in on the sticks. So we're going to see how this one kind of plays out. A couple chances to get points there. We end up with a field goal. But it's a nice lead right now. We're chewing up a lot of the clock. And we're getting a lot of scores. There's a turnover forced. Touchdown. Pretty one-sided. And let's be honest, Minnesota making the Super Bowl uh, is pretty surprising within their own right. And knowing their history as an organization... Well, it's probably very likely that they're going to be the third team of this series if we and you guys decide we go on to do that one. But there is our second Super Bowl in year three. While I was here questioning my offense, is the Chargers sim offense good enough, reliable enough, consistent enough for us to achieve the seven Super Bowl goal? It's been good enough to get us two. It might not have Justin Herbert playing like an MVP, but you know what? He might have just got his second Super Bowl MVP. And let's be honest, in this series anyways, a Super Bowl MVP will trump an NFL MVP every day of the week. We got Bosa. I'm surprised he knows how to use a cell phone. Taking a selfie. I thought the guys enjoyed up there on the podium getting their second Super Bowl in three seasons after last year disappointingly losing in the AFC Championship game to the Cincinnati Bengals. Justin Herbert has his second Super Bowl trophy. We got 
five more of these bad boys to go in a game that, yeah, likely fair to say Justin Herbert, two-time Super Bowl MVP. We do a complete hiring of our coach. I'm going to get Todd Bowles of the D.C. I think he's a great defensive coordinator. Offensively, would love the Bucks off. Let's see if we can split. Oh, we got we got the Rams. I guess, we'll, I guess we'll go with the Rams and we'll switch it up to the Rams. Let's see what the great Sean McVay's offense can do here with Justin Herbert. We say goodbye to an absolute legend as Keenan Allen has announced his retirement after 13 seasons. We are in search of a new wide receiver one. Except for contracts. Khalil Mack, if you got double digit sacks, we would offer him a contract. But exactly what we're going to do, get him on a one year 4.5. I also want to get Donald Parham. Veteran tight end, definitely don't want to be giving him a three-year, but I'll tell you what, he's worthy of a one-year Band-Aid deal, so I'm going to make it worth his while and give him six milli for one season. Let's go. It's a decent free agency period. Some interesting names, Mark Andrews, Sauce Gardner, DK Metcalf, but I'm always trying to, you know, you got to find the value. The value's not really going to be going in, all in on a 28-year-old DK Metcalf, even though he's awesome. Christian, uh, Christian Watson also looks pretty dope, but he's 27. I'm going to go a little off the, the beaten path here. I'm going to get a 25-year-old in Jameson Williams, a player that we utilize heavily in the first 0-7 Super Bowl series with the Detroit Lions. He developed very nicely for us. Ooh, we got those damn Cleveland Browns kind of butting their noses in. Let's kind of go with our max out. Because if I get him four years, 40 mil, pretty happy with that. If we miss... I'm going I'm to be honest. If I find a really good wide receiver, I might be. I might trade up to try to get him. I'm a little annoyed right now, especially with Watson gone. There is. There's. I mean, we have a chance to maybe get like a breakout here. Sky Moore is still on the board. Like maybe just get him as an insurance policy. Worst case, he's gonna be our wide receiver three. Best case, we can't get a wide receiver, and you know, we see if we can develop the kid. Look at the draft. I took two swings at the best two looking wide receiver. Doesn't look like a particularly strong class. Uh, Julius Franklin, second, third round talent. Even that's which is surprising. 6'4, 221, A catching, B release, B catching traffic. I almost don't want to believe it. Because we ran a 4 4 3, built like a freaking tight end. Good vert, third. Like if I, this guy existed in real life, I don't know. But maybe he falls to us. But the player that might be worthy, because we got Paramount on one year, looks like two really good tight ends, but Corey Warner out of Oklahoma, and the fact that he doesn't put an E in Corey already has bonus points. He got three A's, elite speed, elite jumping, great agility, first in the vert. I almost feel like this guy might be too good to pass up on. And looking at the mock, that usually gives you a good idea where the players are going to, you know, the range anyways. It's not always... Word for word, but it usually gives you an idea. They're both going in the mid 20s, so it wouldn't cost us a whole lot to insure the services. And I think right now, you almost got to trust the evaluation, and maybe the tight ends who we got to grab to help our passing offense and help out Justin Herbert take his game to the next level and get him playing like an MVP. But we're gonna trade up to secure our tight end and to move up nine spots. We have traded our third round pick this year, our third round pick next year, on top of our first rounder this year to the Dallas Cowboys, the Leaf Frog. Both the Patriots and the Ravens who are projected to get the top two players. But I think, given the information, given that usually you can trust your scouting when it evaluates talent, uh, the 3A tight end, like the last time we got this many A's, it was a generational corner. This guy looks ridiculous. Let's see what he can do, man. Are you going to be the guy that can finally fill the shoes of Antonio Gates? Or are you going to be another Hunter Henry, which it looks good on the surface, but at the end, you're just kind of like, you're, you know, you're good, but not great. Late to say, I'll tap myself on the back. This guy was projected UDFA, running back, Roosevelt Flemings. Nice little hidden dev, a little developmental guy behind Austin Eckler. He's getting up there in age, going to get a successor in place. Draft recap, and for the cost of two third-round picks, trading up for a 79 hidden dev tight end, I will make that call every day. Of the week. Okay, I guess he's 78, but looks really, really solid, very well-rounded. Again, are you going to be Antonio Gates? Are you going to be Hunter Henry? Choice is yours. Uh, whiffed on the second. I'm just, I don't know, man. I, I'm almost, con you just, unless you roll a guy that has a dev trait, there's just no good edge rushers if you don't have a top 15 pick. So I, I think when we, you know, because I'm just starting to think about life beyond Khalil Mack, life beyond Joe, I think we just got to sign free agents. Uh, I got Javier James, 71 speedster. Fleming, 66, but he does have the dev trait. Rest of the draft just kind of simmed it out there. Uh, we just need Corey Warner to pan out because it's kind of a top-heavy draft.
And just out of curiosity's sake, Julius Franken, the other guy we were considering, hidden dev, 6'4", 221, 92 speed, 91 acceleration. Uh, well, he's 85 catch. I mean, he looks solid. 92 change for like a big guy. What's the dev trade here? At least knowing what what it is, we trust it. He he can't grade it out as a second, third round talent at the wide receiver spot, and I hate myself. Let's go! We have officially tied our losses for the first three years of this rebuild. So you know we're hitting that we're hitting that wall. Definitely hitting the wall here a little bit. We're still eight three, sitting atop the AFC West, which is where we've lived. Since we've decided to even pick up the sticks here for the charge, we have $105 million. I think we've done a great job managing the salary cap here. Uh, two, two below two, who's, I think there's still some nice development there. Let's see if we can give him a four year 38 mil. He's a good run defender on that front three. It's not a sexy job, but it's a job that needs to get done. Derwin James looking for three years, get him under 50 mil, locked in, don't worry about it. JC Jackson. Uh, we're not going to prioritize him yet. We got Zion Johnson, 29, 30, 31, 32. Yes, sir. Get a lineman like that. Not ridiculous money. You try to keep them in house. We got Dion Henley, who is a member of our very first draft class. 83. I'm going to try. Like his ceiling's probably what? 88, 88, 9, maybe 90. So let's see if we. What, what's what's he going to look like at 29 years old? We'll get, bump that contract up. We'll go 4.5, 3.2. Let's go. Tell you what, at this point, I already saw Khalil Mack had a defensive player of the week performance with four sacks. As long as he wants to just keep playing, I'm I'm going to keep paying him. And surprise, surprise, four straight years of 14 and three. Where is this been? Like, I don't think I was... Any of, like, my regular five-year rebuilds, I don't think we're, we're hitting at this kind of level. Because... I don't know. I feel like we win a lot more Super Bowls. We usually get, like, you're lucky in a rebuild of five years if we're getting two. One, you know, we usually can count on one more after the not. We get, we get a lot of successful rebuilds. Sometimes we don't get any, but three, chance at three, chance at four years, chance we accomplished four years, 14 and three. Very good. Number one offense in the NFL. A little bit of a drop off kind of everywhere else than the numbers we've had. Change in offense. The Vegas definitely yielded better touchdown results. 45 touchdowns for Justin Herbert. Run the ball was pretty decent. Austin Eckler, 1,000 yards, almost 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns on the receiving end. Brandon Gentry, our slot wide receiver. Well, I'll take that. Tell you that right now. Quentin Johnson over 1,000 yards, 7 and 4 for Sky Moore, 7 and 5 for the X Factor, Corey Warner. Tight end we traded up for. Not necessarily Antonio Gates numbers, but still pretty freaking good. But the, the slot wide receiver feasting. Kenneth Murray and Henley and Harper all going over 800 tackles. And look at this. Khalil Mack, he is a 70, what, 78? 80 overall. Run stopper at this point. 35 years old. Aging incredibly gracefully. 18 and a half sacks. 16 and a half there for Joey Bosa. 7 and a half. Elijah Rainey. 7 picks. Asante Samuel Jr. 3 from Derwin James. Very, very happy with those numbers. Like, where's Khalil Mack at right now? I mean, Austin Eckler, 9,500 yards, 93 touchdowns. That's awesome. He's also our leading receiver right now. Not as awesome. Khalil Mack at 146 career sacks. And if he just if he plays another year or two, I mean, you can see this guy getting up there. Top 20, top 15 all time, which is a great career for a guy that's, you know, started great, had some injuries and stuff like that the last couple of years, but really, really is a good player. And we are, I think there's, what, four straight years of having the first round by, which is almost unheard of. But, you know, also to be fair, we don't usually rebuild teams like the Chargers. Like, we had, an, we had a very, very good starting place. We started as a Super Bowl contender. So I'm glad that we've been able to navigate the waters there. As Justin Herbert is runner-up for the league MVP, losing out to Lamar Jackson, the Chicago Bear version of Lamar Jackson. Khalil Mack, Defensive Player of the Year at 35 years old. That is awesome. Justin Herbert, quarterback of the year. We finally might get him up to an X Factor. And if that's what we gained from him in, in moving into this, this offense here, the Rams, the McVay offensive tree, we'll take it. Uh, Gentry getting that Cooper Cup action, getting that love. Uh, Zion Johnson, lineman of the year. That could likely be a superstar dev that we'll be able to throw up in the offensive line. Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, one and two. Love that. Asante Samuel Jr. He's been stuck on a star dev for all this whole rebuild. That likely will be a superstar for him. So maybe not all doom and gloom. I, I think we're going to have a lot of good dev trades rolling over into year five of this rebuild. We need to focus here, though, on year four. Another year to kind of cross off another... Ugh. 
Another Super Bowl, potentially. And this one is up first against the 11-6. This is the first time we've played the Chiefs in the playoffs. I'm a little worried. Fuck. One and done. That's kind of what happens. Bad news is that we're one and done against the Kansas City Chiefs. The good news is Justin Herbert's up to an X-Factor. Zion Johnson is up to a superstar. No other dev trades down. I also throw credit to Gentry, who's up to a star. So nothing but positive in the offense. Oh, yeah, and our first-round pick is an X-Factor tight end. Defense all going in the right direction as well as Isante Samuel Jr., the DB of the year, is up to a superstar and really gives us, again, just another year at least of the best secondary in the NFL. I think we never really highlighted that the crazy kicker we got was actually a generational kicker. Ramon McAllister is a superstar dev going into his third year out of Baylor. What's his stats at? 99 kick power, 95 kick accuracy. Yeah, he's a monster. No, oh, how do you go out? You're like defensive player of the year, you retire? Like that? Come on, man. So somehow, like, my sa I have minus $22 million of salary cap. I, I don't know how that happened. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I What? We didn't have that much figures when we were negotiating these contracts. And, like, we should have freed up more money. Khalil Mack left. Retired. So I figured out the issue with the salary cap. For some reason, Justin Herbert, who should have five years left on his contract, has for some reason had all those shifted down to one year, and he's carrying a $157 million cap hit. So I don't know what the fuck happened there, but given the numbers, I'm just gonna I'm gonna give him his five years back. Like that's what he should have remaining. Therefore. That gives us some nice salary cap flexibility, which we were supposed to have all offseason. So now we actually have our appropriate amount of salary cap. Take a couple swings in free agency. First up, we're going to get Deontay Banks. We need a replacement for J.C. Jackson, and we're really not breaking the bank. It's very affordable, and just, I don't know if we're going to get him. Brian Burns is a 99 X-Factor. He's 29 years old, but we need someone that can step right into that Khalil Mack role, and we're unlikely to draft one unless we got to trade probably multiple first-round picks to get into that range. So let's see how it falls. We get Deontay Banks. So we have our corner three wrapped up and Brian Burns decides to go on the 40 whiners. What a joke. They ain't winning nothing. Speed of the devil said there's never pass rushers available. We got two that look pretty good. One I fully scouted is Dallas McNeil. Comes out as a first round talent, a tackle, a power move. We also have a, a pretty much the same player that we didn't get the full scouting report on. So I think we, the tiebreaker is the best athlete. We look at Dallas McNeil, good acceleration. Great speed, good strength. He's second in the 40-yard dash, seventh, fourth, 29 reps. 6'6", 275, great size. Maybe maybe a little on the big side for a 3-4 edge, but I think he can make it work. Dorian Mobley out of Texas, same key ratings. Elite acceleration, great speed, great strength. He's third in the 40-yard dash, second in the three-cone. I, th I think we got to go with the better athlete here. Dorian Mobley, there is your, for better or worse, Khalil Mack replacement. Let's take a swing at another position. Is Austin Eckler is going to the final year of his contract. It would be nice to get a cheap dev trade running back. I'm going to offer a little bit more than what we got last year. We got Brian Bryant. <laughs> no dev, I mean, he might have a good rating, though. I think a little draft recap. I mean, a thing that went our way very much... In the first 0-7 and seven rebuild with the Detroit Lions, we always had great drafts with value picks throughout. Maybe not so much the case here. Our drafts haven't been as hot, but Brian Bryant, 71 normal. Bring some nice speed, some nice juice to the backfield, but Dorian Mobley, we asked, they gave. You never get good pass rushers late. We get one. 77 hidden dev. Now, I do have to see it just out of pure interest what we passed on because it was really really close we straight out one with like the slightly better athlete all things said and done here and um dalvin mcneil went first pick in the second round. he fell he's 75 so we get the player two overall points better but it might not matter if this has a really nice dev trade and our guy ends up having a star or something like that dalvin mcneil just a star all right i mean either way though i will say given the players that are usually available this late in the draft a 77 and a 75 pass rusher still on the board at pick 28. That's a great roll. All right, quick little squad update as we roll into year five. Two Super Bowls and counting five years in. Not a bad start. Pretty good pace. I'm being completely honest with this. Loadout squad could potentially be our final season with Austin Eckler. 
who is 32 years old, and if he's coming up looking for like some stupid three-year contract, got to thank him for his service. But uh, keep an eye on that space day while he performs. We got Johnson Moore and Gentry at the wide receiver core. Offensive line's outstanding. We probably have the best offensive line in the division in the conference, maybe even in the NFL. Gen uh, Warner, X-Factor at the tight end spot. Look for him to have a bigger season. Defensively, front seven is really, really good. But Mobley, who we used our coaching tree ability to unlock his depth trait, just a star. Massive shoes to fill uh, after Khalil Mack retired in the last offseason. But he was coming after back-to-back double-digit sack seasons, like 15, 18 sacks. We need to see it. Or maybe Joey Bosa just puts all of it on himself and carries the load. Uh, and the best secondary in the NFL, I, I don't think. And we had Deontay Banks in to replace J.C. Jackson, which I think long-term is going to be an upgrade. I think, again, we enter this season, Super Bowl contenders, borderline favorites, looking for that third Super Bowl in five seasons. I was just, like, thinking about it, like, what if we go 14-3 and three, five years? I don't think I've ever done that. And then we just lose 7 nothing to the Raiders. Before our bye week. So you never you never really know what's going on. We're playing well. Almost a top five offense, top five defense. Sit it up. The AFC West, where this team really doesn't know any different. Uh, looking at the contracts here. Got to be smart about it. it. doesn't actually look like a lot of money has to get thrown around. We have Jerome Booth at nose tackle. Who's solid. You know, I think we'll give him like a three-year deal. There's only so much you need to pay for a nose tackle. And he might have reached his ceiling, so I don't really want to overpay. Quentin Johnson, now I put him in the slot this year. Just to see if we can get a little extra juice to the numbers there. But I think because he is like one of the big name value players. Um, let's keep him until he's 30. We'll, we'll offer him, you know, bump him up here a little bit because there's not a lot of interest uh, from him initially. We'll give him a five-year, $64 million deal. I'm going to gamble that when all said and done, he's going to thrive in our slot position. Maybe get a superstar dev. And that contract's going to age gracefully. But guy back from the offensive line, you know what I say? You run your lineman into the ground. Plus, when they have interest like that to return... He actually wants more years. I have no problem keeping you till you retire, buddy. So joke's on you. Austin Eckler's looking for a two-year deal. He's an absolute legend. That's a reasonable contract. Honestly, we'll take that. I have no issue about that. But we will probably be drafting a running back this year. And if they end up having a dev trade or something like that, we'll probably maybe shift the reins there a little bit. Maybe just keep Austin Eckler as a third down back. Reason why I say that is one of the strengths of this year's draft. And I set my scout to focus scout the running backs. Running back was a strength. This is the first time. I've been looking for running backs the last two years. This is the first time that it's actually been a strength of the draft class. So I want to make sure that if there is a stud in there, if there is someone that can be Austin Eckler's replacement, we can bring him in. I don't think we complained too much when our when I had to say our worst record, 13 and four. Still really good. Number two offense, number one. This might be our best team yet, honestly. Like I think the expectations right now of us going on to win a Super Bowl I'm, I'm anticipating. We need that third Super Bowl ring here. Justin Herbert. Yards haven't really been there, but the touchdowns has definitely changed since we've gone to the Rams playbook. That's our offensive coordinator from the Rams tree. And uh, Staley's obviously the defensive mind, so he lets him handle the OC. Uh, 41 touchdowns for Justin Herbert. Love seeing that. 11 and 13 for Austin Eckler. And yeah, the slot wide receiver just eats in this. Quinton Johnson, 136 receptions, 1,800 yards, 18 touchdowns. Good Freaking God, man. Ridiculous numbers. Ridiculous production. I love it. Henley led the team. 125 tackles, 3.5 sacks, 3 picks. 16 sacks from Bosa, 8.5 from Rainey, 7.5 from Tui Pelotu, only 4 from Mobley. 5 picks, Derwin James, 4 from Deshaun Harper, 4 from Deontay Banks, 4 from Asani. Like best secondary in the NFL, and they actually lived up to it this year. MVP goes to Damon Rowe with Justin Herbert coming in at number five. Looking for some chargers here along the way. Dorian Mobley does still win. Defensive Rookie of the Year, which if we get that superstar dev on him as a pass rusher, that'd be freaking cool. Somehow, Devontae Adams beats out Quentin Johnson for wide receiver of the year. It doesn't really matter. You can only go up dev trait once, and he's going to get it easily on those receiving numbers. Joey Bosa gets best linebacker, so that could bode well for him on a superstar dev currently to get that bump up to an X-Factor. They kind of help us as a team collectively replace Khalil Mack on the defense. And just, again, rinse and repeat. Five years in a row, we have been the one seed in the AFC. And now we get to avenge our year two AFC championship game loss early against the 11-6 and six Cincinnati Bengals. Now, the Bengals are good. We're gooder. They only have really offense. They don't got much going ways of the defense, so I expect us to dump a lot of points on them, win a potential shootout, which is exactly what happens as we knock them off 38-31, setting up a matchup against the 11-6 Jonathan Taylor-led Indianapolis Colts, 
who are a lot better with a top five offense, top 10 defense. But I'm not really worried about it too, too much. They're good though, 89 overall. I and mean, we lost to the Chiefs. We could take that, we could understand that. This was a close one, sets up a matchup against the Giants. And I'm gonna tell you right now, what are the odds the Giants have Jalen Hurts? They feel like they signed Jalen Hurts every year and become good in franchise mode lately. Uh, in this one here, Bryce Young is the quarterback of the Colts. Got Just got out by Justin Herbert a little bit. And let me just see, is Jalen Hurts the freaking quarterback of the Giants? I'm so annoyed by that. Even though I'm annoyed by Jalen Hurts going on the Giants, they are very good. 88s across the board. Saquon Barkley, insane season. They have a better record than us, 14-3. and three. They have the number one offense against the number two offense. Number six defense against the number one defense. This is clearly the two best teams going at it for the Super Bowl. Hopefully we can find a way to win and get our third of seven. Now because I hate the Giants and I really want that third Super Bowl, might hop in here a couple times if the boys need a little bit of help. We were able to score a touchdown on our opening drive. But it's still going to be tough to stop Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley. Luckily, we have the best defense in the NFL. So if we have a chance. And it is just a little bit of a shoot here. 14-14. Don't want to fall behind. Don't want to be the first team to blink. And that would be, in this scenario, the first team that just doesn't score. Giving uh, both times we have each scored with a possession. So let's go third and three. Herbert drops back. Quentin Johnson on the sideline. Breakout year. Both feet in. Wasn't a clean catch. But it's enough to keep the drive going. Just outside the red zone. Come on, fellas. Finish this drive off. We have to settle a field goal. Just freaking lame. You know they're not going to settle for a field goal. They get the touchdown. Luckily, we're able to go down the field. Get a touchdown. Get a three-point lead. That field goal is the decider. But it just they are not getting field goals. We are giving up touchdowns at an alarming rate. But we did get a stop there, which sets up third and five in the fourth. I'm not going to lie. We pretty much need a touchdown here because I'm going to guarantee they're going to get the ball and get a touchdown. I think it's going to take us two touchdowns. We get two touchdowns, we're going to win this game. If we don't, probably going to lose it. But look at that separation immediately in the slot. Maybe that's where Quentin Johnson needed to be all along. Throws a stiff arm up to the seven. It's been a clean game for Justin Herbert. 289 yards through the air. Two touchdowns. Come on, finish this drive off here, fellas. Why? Why are we struggling so badly? None of these plays look good. We'll go cross drag. Take too long. They're going to get the ball and score. We're taking too freaking long right now. We got our X-Factor tight end. Can he do something? They're just going to fucking... Ah! Sean Gary. I almost think we got to go for it. Oh, they go for it to get the touchdown. Let's go. But you know they're going to score. It's fucking as predictable as... Oh, they go field goal. Minute 14 to go. I hate this shit, man. Fucking come on. So fucking predictable. All right. What's the play? Who? I mean, do we got Quentin Johnson got a lot of speed, I suppose. Whatever. Give him give him that time. For the time out, just I don't know if there's going to be a play clock runoff. Jesus Christ, fucking shambolic, man. Don't worry, it's going to be worth it. What's the best? Verts. We'll just go, we'll go four verts. Quinn Johnson. We got Sky Moore, lots of speed. Gentry is nice. Uh, look, they, we got the look. We got the look. One of these guys gets open, we hit the home run, and we get out of this cheese fest of a game. Who's going to be the one? I mean, we're planning on this anyways, but to cap off a brutal, cheesy Super Bowl loss, Austin Eckler retires. It is an outstanding year to need a running back, which is exactly what we did. I spent, and I focused the whole draft class on the running back spot. Move the top three. Top overall, guys, the first round. We got two different top five talents. One is actually a scheme fit here in Johnny Murphy. We're getting one of the two. That's, we're very close. Maze, the other top five. We had two top five running backs. And literally, I, I would have, I don't know, I would have broke something, I feel like, if all the guys were gone and I just sat there and waited. But we got Johnny Murphy here, A-ball, Cure Vision, B-break tackle, A-K, has D-catching, which 
Not amazing. Very un-Austin Eckler-like. Not a crazy combine, but he's top five, so I'm assuming he's just... I'm worried that there might not be a dev trait, but I think he'll probably be at least like a 75, 76, 77. That's probably what warrants a top five talent. And wow, where did that... Like 93 acceleration, 90 speed for that combine? Really good. Kind of built... You know, he's kind of like a Nick Chubb. Hey, take a look at our draft recap. Not, not bad at all. We got a 72 wide receiver, 71 defensive tackle, but it's all on the running back. Johnny Murphy, 78 top five talent with a dev trait. But knowing that there was two other running backs that went before us, it's always interesting to see what the devs are, especially Mays, who was also top five at least. 77. What is the dev trait here? Watch it be like fucking X Factor or something like that. Give, I'm just, I'm in a bad mood with that, that freaking Super Bowl loss. Just a start out. All right, not bad. I mean, I was always kind of leaning Murphy anyways if both were still on the board. And I don't know who drafted the first running back. Let's just go see it for shits and giggles. Where'd he go? Come on. He went early, man. He went... There we go. Gresham. 76 out of Oklahoma to the Rams. Also with a hidden dev. I'm going to guess star. If I had to guess. Superstar. Oh, shit. He might have been the best of the bunch. The two things. First... Let's go! Second of all, Isaiah George. He's the player that we used our, well, just the Sim decided to pick as our unveiled dev trait. He was our third round pick. Superstar dev. Long ways to go. Doesn't mean a whole lot because right now he's better than the dev trait. That's always kind of cool. But Johnny Murphy, top five true talent, X Factor running back, immediately our Austin Eckler successor. The 2028 season, and surprise, surprise, first place right now at 94 overall squad. We're six and one. Chiefs right on our team. Kansas City's actually hasn't been ridiculously good. Arguably, the year that they beat us one and done two years ago. Look, the last time they've been good for most of this rebuild, which has been odd, but well, some, there's definitely something to keep an eye on as the remainder of the season kind of falls out here. We have 87 million dollars of available salary cap, that of which we want to maximize for sure. I'll say Gentry, because he had that break. He, I'm very interested in bringing him back, Gentry. I mean, Sky Moore, three years. He's not going to regress during that three years. Only $22 million. Hmm. I did just set up my focus getting to wide receiver. It's a strong wide receiver class. Um, maybe we'll just pick Gentry because he's had the breakout. He's two, you know, a couple years younger. He'll make up that overall difference easily during that time frame and give him a longer year because that's very affordable uh, we have brent mccullough at center not overly interested in re-signing with us don't really ever want to overpay for a center but we'll give him we'll give him a nice pay raise if he doesn't take this we'll just move on which is gross because you yeah look at that man i i'm not overpaying for a center kenneth murray overpay best kicker in the nfl i will pay i will pay fine money for the best freaking kicker in the nfl we had a shot higher, but let's go to the big dogs here. 26. Let's give him a six-year deal. Keep him until he's 32. Keep him for, like, the rest. He wants more years or less years? Because if he wants more, I'll give him more. We got Bosa. I'll give him a two-year deal. Keep him until he's 35. That was the age that Khalil Mack retired. But we definitely got to figure out how many years Deshaun Harper wants. Can't let him walk. So I got Deshaun Harper across the line. I had to give him a seven-year contract. Not overly upset about that. I went to Brandon Gentry, and I was like, all right, let's give you five. He said he wants more years, so what if we give him six million? There we go. Our six seasons, 30-some million. Signs on the dotted line. Finish the 2028 season. Second place, the first time we've been runners-up in the AFC West. It's only it was a matter of time until Kansas City got it going. So we're going to have to run the gauntlet here. We start in the wildcard round against the Indianapolis Colts. We still had a pretty strong season, all things considered. Justin Herbert, solid year, 38 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 1,000 yards, 17 touchdowns for our X-Factor running back, Johnny Murphy. We needed a replacement for Austin Eckler, and boy, did we get one. 1,500 yards, 5 touchdowns, Quinton Johnson, Corey Warner, the X-Factor tight end, 967 and 12, 98 for Sky Moore, 98 for Brandon Gentry. Respectable numbers. Dion Henley, 129 tackles, leading the team. We had 14 sacks from Bosa, 9 from Rainey, 7.5 from Tui Pelotu, three picks. Derwin James, so it's just a strong year. Solid season, maybe not as prolific of an offense as I would have liked to have seen, but given that there was a lot of transition and we had to, you know. Austin Eck was a tough loss. Johnny Murphy stepped up, man. Offensive Rookie of the Year award to him. Full kudos there. Looking at the rest of the awards. Joey Bosa gets Linebacker of the Year. 
So at least we can kind of count on that for regression. Like neither one of those guys will regress. They'll still be X factors. So kicking off our journey here. The first time we've actually had to go through the gauntlet. I think we've been very blessed to be the top seed in first round. Bye. We handle business. But what did we really win? You know, anytime you see a sim team, a sim team be a 92 overall. That is not what you want to see. But, you know, at least we started out hot, man, dropping 42 points in a playoff game when our offense was, you know, just good, not great this year. That's that's a great start. Uh, all things considered, ran the ball well, threw the ball well. Defense did their job. We got a sack. We got a Deontay Banks interception. But it is a whole nother beast when you have to play the Kansas City Chiefs. And look at how the Chiefs, well, we got the 11th offense, top 10 defense. The Kansas City Chiefs have top 5 offense and top 5 defense. Last time we played them was in 2026, where they bounced us in the first round, and we light the scoreboard up to go back to a championship game. And it actually looks, the Dolphins got 42 points and 44 points, so this could be a all-time classic. But look at that, man. We started out very strong in the first half, four touchdowns. No picks for Justin Herbert. Two touchdowns for the rookie running back. Sky Moore gets a little revenge against his former team that deemed he was not worthy of another contract. Eliza Rainey with the sack. Two picks from Deshaun Harper, one of the best, if not the best, corner in the NFL right now. And that sets up an opportunity to get back to another Super Bowl in pursuit of our third Super Bowl title. But what stands between us is the 89 overall B. John Robinson-led Miami Dolphins. Looking at their rankings, you know, it's not, maybe it's not B. John Robinson. They have number two passing offense. So I assume I still got, you know, Tyree Kill's probably still doing his thing. He's up there in age a little bit. Jalen Wild potentially. And we just showed you, man, there is levels to this 50 bomb. Look at this. I, we, we need to get credit here. We got 42 points on the wild card, 45 points in the divisional against the Chiefs, 50 bomb. This might be like our, our biggest, like, we got to be the favorites here. Justin Herbert, three touchdowns, no picks. Ran the ball particularly well. Great one-two punch. Sky Moore's been on fire. Gentry, four catches, three touchdowns on those four catches. We got two and a half sacks from Rainey. Couple other sacks down the board there. JT Woods and Kevin Webster. Who? Get some interceptions. Role players stepping up. And we're going to the Super Bowl against the 40 Winers. And I would have liked to win the Super Bowl last year. Remember, we went to the Super Bowl last year, lost to the New York Giants. We're playing a team that didn't even go 500. This, out of all of our Super Bowls, the ones that we've won, the ones that we've lost, this needs to be a win. Because we lost the Super Bowl last year against the Giants, and in my opinion, that was a cheesy loss, I'm almost going to do everything in my power to ensure that we get a victory here today. Uh, borderline playing every single snap. Uh, we have an offense, though, that's averaged 40 42 points, we'll call it, in this playoff. So I'm expecting to see at least a 30 bomb. And it's going to be more so can the 49ers offense keep up with us. And it's looking like a good first half. Like here, right here is where I'm going to come in. Because this could be like a deck. If we can go in 24-3 at halftime, I think the fellows are going to be able to see this one out. But if not, maybe it's just giving that little extra boost. First and 10. What do we got here? Boom! We throw it! We get Quentin Johnson in the end zone. Touchdown we've been looking for. Spike it right in his goddamn face. 24-3. Let's go, man. And not only that, our defense is, you know, our defense is better than what they've been playing in this playoffs, but I feel like there's just been a lot of our offense has been so good. Our defense is kind of taking their, their foot off the opponent's throats. And look at this, man. 34-10. Drop the 40 bomb. I love to see that level of consistency throughout. It wasn't like we came into this after averaging 40 points and we get seven. We get nothing but field goals. 41-10. The Chargers handle their business. We're not going to gloat. We still got a bunch more to go. Five touchdowns. I believe that's three Super Bowls for us and three Super Bowl MVPs for Justin Herbert. He is playing big time in big time games. Let's get another one. Let's keep stacking them here. Let's go on a roll. The roster in closing has now three times Super Bowl champions. We got Herbert X Factor 99, Murphy X Factor 89, Quentin Johnson 95 Superstar. Warner's still an X Factor. I, don't, I believe no dev traits up or down. Believe. Now, I, the last time I recorded this was last night, middle of the night. Sal's working soon. So maybe if there was a dev trait up or down, my apologies. But as far as my recollection, nothing there on the offense. On the defensive side, I know Rainey was a superstar. He lost that, which kind of sucks. But I think that's it. 
did, did Sante have a superstar? Either way, not that bad. Still very, very good team. You know what, I, wouldn't, I wasn't really able to land a long-term extension with my center, but that's still pretty good. 25 years, only 86, and the franchise tag's 12 million bucks, which you weren't going to spend anyways. Yeah, screw it, why not? So, going into free agency, going into this offseason, we need a middle linebacker to replace Kenneth Murray, and we need a wide receiver upgrade. Austin looks like the best option at linebacker, but I don't want to overpay it. As you can see, we went with our offer, not even making the top five, and I just made like a reasonable offer. So there's that, and then I looked at the wide receivers, and there's really just one guy that you would want, which is Justin Jefferson, which I thought about, but the fact that likely our next rebuild, if, a, if we do another one of these, is going to be the Vikings. I don't really want Justin Jefferson in back-to-back -back series, because obviously he'd be a big part. And he's also incredibly expensive. I don't even know if I can afford him with my salary cap. And beyond that, you know, we got guys like Sky Moore still up there, and really the only other wide receiver, Marquise Favors here at Michigan State. Uh, zero interest in signing with us. So I think we're going to have to just shift our focus and attention towards the draft to hopefully land an affordable yet studly wide receiver and linebacker. And given our last couple drafts, man, we've got what? It's a couple X. We've drafted three X Factors out the gate here in this rebuild. Got to get a good roll and hopefully we can do it again this offseason. The bad news for this draft is that the only wide receiver that looks worthy of drafting is going one overall. Top five talent, Chris Baldwin here to Michigan, 6'3", 230. Double A, double B, and the drop off from that is not necessarily substantial, but you know this guy's probably gonna go before we like we're picking thirty. But like, and these, you know, and more so to the argument, these guys aren't necessarily worth trading up for. And as you can see, I got a lot of scouting done on the wide receivers in this year's class. That was a position that I that I really focused on. And like, there's not even like value guys. It's it's a bad, bad. Wide receiver class. Now then we can shift our attention towards linebacker. Doug Webster looks legit. Taylor Selvey, who we scouted a little bit more, good combine, looks like a nice little cover linebacker as well. In the inside, Jeff Hadley, surprised. Like that, don't, that, you know, doesn't really look that impressive for a first rounder. Pierman looks a little solid. Jerry Baker, you know, Moses looks all right. But I mean, again, just, I, I think we just got a bad, bad roll. And we've been, what, so this is year seven. We've had very good rolls every other draft, and I guess we were due. We're going to trade out. It's the first time, but why not stack the deck so that if we have another bad roll like this, where there's clearly a guy, top five, top ten that we want, we might have a little bit more ammunition to go get that with two first round picks in the 2030 draft. So I'm going to take this off here from the Jags and get a first and a fifth next year for the final pick in the first round this year. All right, brutal. Thought we could wait. Get Lamar Moses, who's my top linebacker. And he goes two picks before we can. So we have really only one guy on my entire draft board left. And I don't even think he's going to be that great. But we're going to get Taylor Selvey out of Notre Dame. A tackle, B pursuit. Hopefully that coverage is not too bad. He's elite acceleration, agility, jump, a just S-tier type athlete. And uh, you know what? Pretty damn good pick right there. There is our replacement for Kenneth Murray. Hey, take a look at our draft recap. Yep, that's pretty much what happens. Trade. I'm glad that we traded up. Board was not particularly good. Kind of clean. I couldn't even find a punter. That was like worth drafting. I need a punter right now. And usually I can get one. It was bad there. But hey, Selvi, we needed a linebacker. We got one. At least he rolled with the dev trade. Great athlete. Got a ways to go. But you know, he's going to a veteran defense. So I, I think it's going to be a right environment for him to catch on. Rating stays the same. And at least we got one guy. Down into the 2029 season. Better known as year number seven. And definitely a lot of adversity. Four, five and four, just one game above 500 is a 95 overall squad. Is definitely underperforming. We have a six ranked offense, 14th ranked defense, but a top five rushing defense. I mean, it's not terrible in terms of underperformance, but we just get a couple bad rolls there. $72 million of available salary cap. How are we going to spend it? Let's prioritize it later a little bit. Um, hmm. Interesting. I think Rainey gets the most because even though he's lost Dev trait, I think he's, he's still not at his ceiling. Probably got another three solid years of only developing. Everyone else is kind of on the downswing here a little bit. Might have to make a couple tough calls. Like I don't really want to have to replenish my entire secondary. But um, we might just have to go by who's interested. Derwin James, two-year deal because it's not going to cost a lot to get him across the line. I mean, everyone is kind of interested. Except that freaking center that we're playing on the franchise tag. Maybe he's just pissed off he's playing on the franchise tag. Uh, JT Woods, I don't really like. Much more than a two-year deal for you. And he takes it. Honestly, I, I didn't really like that four-year contract for a guy that's 29. Corner's a little bit of a different beast. 
We can get maybe Asante on a two-year. Not going to worry about it. Not going to be worried about a little tight there against the salary cap here. Our team's really good. And really, we got that 12 million bucks plus whatever additional we get. And the only guy we're going to have to replace is center. And I would like to grab another wide receiver. So that can be done in free agency and or the draft if we get a good roll. At the end of the 2029 season, back where we belong atop the AFC West, 12 and 5. Not good enough to get the first round by, but look at how freaking juiced our team is. 97 offense, 95 defense, 96 overall. Top three offense, top five. I mean, I think I, I'm, I'm I'm smelling Super Bowl four here, fellas. Like this is a year we got to capitalize on everything that we got going for us, which is a lot. Justin Herbert threw the football like crazy, 5,100 yards. That might be the most passing yards we've had yet with him definitely have the most touchdowns but the yards are picking up have we ever even broke 5,000 yeah all right good year from them 12 and 15 for Johnny Murphy the x-factor running back Quentin Johnson thriving in the slot 1300 yards 13 touchdowns 1300 yards six tutties for Gentry 1100 yards eight tutties over 100 catches for our tight end Corey Warner love seeing that defensively Dion Henry Tackle machine. We got 17 and a half sacks from Bosa, nine for two at below two, six and a half from Mobley, six from Rainey, four picks, Deshaun Harper, three from Derwin James, three from JT Woods, two from Asante Samuel. That's why we're paying expensive contracts to keep this secondary together. It is the lifeblood of our defense that has got three Super Bowls looking for our fourth. Brock Purdy wins the MVP. Like that would ever freaking happen. Justin Herbert coming in at number nine. Look at the rest of the awards, just finding and looking for some chargers. Greenfield, Pierre Greenfield. That's our backup tight end. I don't, it must have just been a terrible class because there's no way, man. This guy, 400 yards at the most. Like, let me go and see it. Must, it's, what? Roman McAllister gets kicker of the year, but how did I win offensive rookie of the year with a back? That, that I guess, wins it for you. 23, can, like, no rookies were playing this year? Gotta be glitched. But hey, you know what? Beggars can't be choose. I'll take that's going to be a free dev trade for a depth player. Maybe we can use him as a trade piece with our first two first round picks in this upcoming draft to move up and get a stud. End of the first round of the playoffs, we got ourselves the Las Vegas Raiders, led by Josh Jacobs, who's still doing his thing. They got a good defense. Top five defense. Could be a low scoring matchup, but we're going to see. Really a top five defense. What do you look like against our juggernaut of an offense? And you, they look like absolutely nothing. 42 17 and i can only assume that's justin herbert flexing his muscles which is exactly what happened i believe i saw that we're taking on the colts in the next round and they were barely above 500 you know what we like to do to teams that are barely above 500 even though hey, they're a respectable 90 overall that's pretty damn good that's good for you but you're there's levels to this there's levels to this in a week that we just gotta look and gloat as justin herbert five total touchdowns good god well the stats might not be like ridiculous i almost feel like justin herbert's getting a little bit of that like he's getting better with age type deal going on here so now standing in our way is a modest jets team 11 and 6 86 overall 10 overall points worse but you know they got a top 10 offense top 10 rushing defense luckily you know i don't think we have to worry about justin herbert having to run the ball they gotta stop us through the air and they just they didn't even stand a chance man 40 bomb again Got 40s in all of our playoff games last year en route to a Super Bowl. Feels like that's pretty much the case here now. Setting up a matchup against a very good Lamar Jackson, Nick Bosa-led Chicago Bears team. 13-4, and 4, 90 overall. Top five offense. Number one defense in the NFL. This is, like, this, this is going to be a tough one. This is going to be a fun one. I also peeped the tail of the tape. They got Jalen Carter as well, who I assume is just going to be a goat for the Philadelphia Eagles, the reincarnation of Jerome Brown. Well, let's see what we can do, man. This is going to be a game that, you know, we've been averaging 40 points, but this is the toughest defense I think we've faced in a Super Bowl yet. Let's see what happens, man. We're playing playing pretty well. I don't, you know, I'd love to not have to hop in. Our defense is doing a great job. Oh, first and goal on the two. Is this where we punch it in with our X-Factor running back? Johnny Murphy, this is where we run at the heart of what makes this Bears team tick and see what we can do. We run, oh my God, they mauled us. They absolutely mauled us, which is going to give us a very, very tough decision on what to do. I think we go for it. I think we trust Justin Herbert smart enough not to eat a sack here. And worst case, we can get field goals. It looks like it's going to be a low scoring game. 
points at a premium. I'm going to be honest. I think if I had to take my top target gentry at the screen, at the slant looks good, but I think I want to try to get this into my X-Factor tight end here because he's a monster. No one covered him right in the heart of those four bear defenders. Corey Warner, the X-Factor, too much to handle. That is a must-need touchdown there for the Chargers. And let's see this number one Bears defense, man. They're gas. I don't necessarily know if this is a reflection of of the Bears defense being overrated. I just think their offense has done nothing. Three and outs, punts, and that is a gassed defense going up against one of the most prolific offenses in the NFL. And that is Super Bowl win number four for the LA Chargers. We got three more to go to reach our goal. And I think right now, you know, we're, we're rolling. Our team's, our team's absolute money. But we're starting to see... Our secondary is getting very old. Derwin James, JT Woods, Asante Samuel, those guys there are at their best. They're only going to get worse. And I think my big question is that man under center there, Justin Herbert. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some regression this year. If the regression is only beginning right now, and, uh, you know, it's good that we're on a roll, but I don't, I'd rather that regression start, you know, when we're on Super Bowl six and we only need one more, not what we still need to achieve three more. To reach our goal but very happy that we got back-to-back -back super bowls here in year six and year seven what is year number eight what is the 2023 season going to give us hell you know what we're just pretty much the philadelphia eagles we went to the super bowl fortunately the eagles didn't win it but we went to the super bowl and we also have two first round picks in the upcoming draft let's do some damage so to the players of the draft class, thank God we have done another year of all of our homework on the wide receivers. Uh, I got Max Rudolph here as a little bit of a value pick because he has the AD prep running, which is what we want to look for. So he's breaking a lot of thresholds. But Will Street, it doesn't look overly impressive. Three Bs and a C. I would like, if he had that and he was like 6'4", 230, I'd be like, all right, well, then clearly he's just a big possession guy. Nothing really good in his combine, but he's a top five talent. So, I don't know. Like, I almost feel like we just say, we say screw it, and we, and we kind of trust. You know, there's no one else really trying to worth trade up for, I don't think. Looking at the, the available players, like, we're good at edge. I mean, we could get younger at corner. Derek Whiting there out of Colorado. But again, you know, I'm more of a size guy. I wanted, like, if that guy was 6'4", I'd be like, all right, let's, let's jump up for him. But um, I'm kind of thinking we, we maybe trade up. And the reason why, it's not going to cost us. We have a better shot because right now he's going fourth. So if we want him, we'd have to trade up. Maybe we could just straight up wait for the Rams pick, or we could trade to the third pick. So it's not like we have to get the first overall selection. So if we want to get a top five talent, we're going to have to trade up within the top five. We have the ammunition to potentially do that. Also, else we have the fifth pick in the draft. So I honestly think we could probably just give our first, a second, just to get rid of picks at this point. I'll give you a one, a two, and a seven. What? What does that even mean? I'll give you a one, two, and a three. Give me the give me the guy. They're gonna get him. They're gonna get this wide receiver. God, why pause the draft? I didn't pause the draft. Fuck me. What? Alright. I'm just gonna eat the mulligan on that one. That was kind of a botch, I guess. I didn't pause the draft. So I'm gonna shift my fifth pick for pick 21 and a future first. So that hey, maybe we can try to do this all again next year. So we'll grab the speed guy that's still available, Tyler McCollum, here out of Florida State. Please have a dev trait. Thank you. At least we get a silver lining. And I guess centers are people, too, with our final first-round pick. We have Antonio Peterson. We do need a center. It's pretty big. Well, it's top fit for our team. Triple A, elite strength, elite acceleration, elite agility, elite dev trait. Not. Back to the well here. Got another center that will also look very good. Has an actual dev trait. Worst case scenario, one of these guys will shift in and likely be a very good guard at worst. Look at our draft class. Knowing that we were able to shift things around and get another future first round pick for our personal bots job. And we still got a 73 hidden dev wide receiver. 73 normal dev lineman. Which, I mean, we could shift him to guard. And then we double dip and get a 75 hidden dev center. That's going to be our starting center. We can take Peterson with that 92 strength. And, and shift him to one of the guard spots and be a successor there. And I don't want to do it, but I think we have to. What is the player we passed up on? All right, he's 79 overall. Okay, not super fast. He's hidden dev. Okay, so this is the wide receiver that if we hit the pause button like we should have, he would have been our pick. And it would have cost us a second round pick. I'm going to be... 
I know we've had our fair share of drafting X Factor. I'm just that should have been another one. That should have easily been another superstar X Factor out the box. And uh, apparently we can't have good things. So, oh, we got a really good center. <laughs> we got a star devil. Oh man, that's probably, I mean, not a lot has gone wrong. So I, you know, it's not like it's it's agonizing, but man, that is certainly frustrating. As we look at our team here in the 2030 season. Still very good, definitely legitimate contenders here to go on and compete and potentially win another Super Bowl as we are in our quest for Super Bowl number five of seven. Regression hasn't been too harsh. Like I'm looking at our top players here and in terms of regression, I think Herbert was like a 97. He's only went down one overall point to a 96. But knowing that he's at that ceiling is, uh, it's never a great feeling. Joey Bosa is regressing during James is regressing. JT Woods is regressing. Not too much out of Asante Samuel. So, I mean, I still think we bolster the best secondary in the NFL. But as always, year 30 versus year freaking one, it's all about what is this man going to do? Justin Herbert, 32 years old, plays his best football in the biggest moments. Let's get him back to another Super Bowl. And we got a little diversity here in 2030. Four and three, third place in the division, but really we're only one game back from first place. I see the Kansas City Chiefs bounce back. Let's take a look at some contracts here. 52 milli. We have Corey Warner has no interest in resigning. Well, we're going to have to change his mind there and give him a very player-friendly deal because we're not letting that guy walk. 2 e 2 of Palo, two, part of that first-year draft class. Honestly, we'll just start here with offering him a legit three-year deal. He's been solid. He's been consistent. Bosa, well, if you'll take a one-year deal. Last time we threw a one-year deal like this up, the player just upped and retired. But we're going to have to lose a little bit with all this resigning. We're going to lose D-tackle, our nose tackle, Jerome Booth, which is fine because his depth right now is, I believe, still. He was a superstar out the gate. Has yet to regress. I don't know how. He's not playing at all. I've had starters regress. But we have George just straight up hasn't regressed one bit. He has been superstar. So it's been two years. Let's make him a starter. At the end of year number eight, a.k.a. the 2030 season, a nice, fun wild card game against the Chiefs who signed Dustin Jefferson. Well, let's get this one. Oh, that's, it's like ripping a bandaid off. Let's quickly burn through our stats. 5,200 yards, 39 touchdowns. Herbert's what we expect. Johnny Murphy, 17 tutties, 1,300 yards. Big years of the Johnson, Warner, and Gentry. Who needed that X-Factor wide receiver? That guy was a, a bitch anyways. Henley with a tackle machine, four picks. 10 out of sacks, both a 10 from Rainey, 7 for 2 with below 2, 4 picks, Henley. Interceptions, okay. Interceptions dropped off a little bit from our secondary, which definitely don't love seeing. Kind of Jalen Hurts is your MVP, burning through. Let's see if we can find some chargers here. If there is any, there's not, which I don't care about. But we got this. I mean, if we win this one, I'm going to say we're going to get that Super Bowl 5. If we lose this one, which is probably likely, I'm not even going to be mad about it because everything's just doom and gloom right now. I'm missing on the X Factor. One and done against an inferior Chief squad because we're the freaking Chiefs. Cannot wait, Madden 24, where the Chiefs aren't winning every single time. And a legend retires, Derwin James calls it quits after 13 years. That is a now massive hole we're going to have to try to fill. Phrasing. We don't miss anyone because life's too short. Let's look at the stats right now. Career stats, quick update. As we get ready for year number nine on the upcoming 53,000 yards passing, 400 touchdowns for Justin Herbert. Just barely got into the 100 threshold of interception. So he's protecting the football very well in this field. 9,700 yards, 73 tutties for Quinton Johnson. Gentry's been here. Warner's been solid. Defensively, we got over 1,000 tackles, 170 sacks for Joey Bosa. You love seeing that. 51 and a half sacks, two below two, 50 for Elijah Rainey. 24 picks, Asante Samuel, 19 for JT Woods. Yeah, you know what? And I mean, DBs usually are like the one that you can kind of miss on because DBs never have great sim numbers. But still would have been kind of cool to see where Derwin James was at. So, hey, Madden, I'm going to hereby introduce a new request feature. When you have the retired screen, you make it a thing. It's like an option. You're going to go look at it during the option. You should be able to hit A and look at that player's profile so I can go look at their stats. You don't have to straight up let me look at their career stats and have that big picture. But at least let me go through and look at what they did year to year at minimum. Because sometimes they're surprising. And you always want to kind of look at what the guy's done. And it's kind of, in, you know, it's a final deal when you look at this. You, you can't go back and look at anything. I feel like that's kind of lame. I don't like spending in free agency, but when I have a safety that's only looking for $3 million a year, that's 26 years old and has a superstar dev, um, yeah, there's our massive shoes to fill, but there's our guy that's going to replace German James, or at least try to. 
I'm gonna be honest with you, fellas. I think botching last year's trade was the best thing that could ever happen to us because the number one overall player in this draft class is a wide receiver. He's six foot six, 221 pounds. A catch in traffic, B deep right running, A release. So that's pretty good. Runs a four three. <laughs> 40. He's mine. This is my guy. I will trade all of my picks. I will Ricky Williams, Mike Dick of this thing. This Michael Clark with an E is going to be a charger. Might have overpaid, might have not, but when the Atlanta Falcons saw Julio Jones staring him in the face, they gave up the picks. I remember, and this is not a situation where I remember the Bills traded a bunch of picks to get Sammy Watkins. This guy here is going to be ridiculous. So we traded both first round picks this year, our first round pick next year to get the number one overall selection. I'm not even letting the draft clock start so we can get burned. I actually, like, this is maybe the most hype I've been this entire year for a player. He's, like, the only knock against him is he's 23. He's a little, if this is 20, if he's 21, maybe. 23 years old, 6'6", 220, 433, first in the bench, 43 and a half inch vertical, first in the broad jump, three cone, 20 yard shot. I'm not expecting a 6'6 guy to be agile. Michael Clark, welcome to LA. Holy shit. Second round, we're going to grab a guard who's BPA on our board, Marcus Wakefield. Just added some depth to the offensive line with that size. Could potentially kick out the tackle. It's never a bad thing to build up a lot of O line depth. Got some guys that are getting up there in age a bit. And looking at a recap, Michael Clark, 83. <laughs> I always just want to peek at the dev trade at this point. It, it, it's got to be an X fact. We're going to see it as soon as we pop him in to the weekly training. The best. He's not the highest rated, but that might be. this might be the best player I've ever drafted in Madden 23. I mean, it was obvious. End of the 2031 season. You know, we're, I think we should be a better than 5-3, and three, considering our team's like the best team in the NFL. And we should have a little of added motivation after being one and done, dusted in the playoffs last year against the Chiefs. But five and three, you know, yeah, maybe there's going to be a couple of sneaky losses here and there. We have $125 million of contracts that uh, we're likely going to have to pay out. I, can't, I don't think we can really just look at this money and be like, wow, we're rich. We're going to be spending a lot. We have Justin Herbert. It's going to take a lot of that. I'll give him a three-year start there. He wants, wow, he actually didn't even pay attention. He does not want anything to do with it. Same with Rashawn Slater. Why, fellas? Why you have to be so mid? It's just game. Slater side. He bought in. You got Asante Samuel on a one year. Let's bump that up. Let's round these numbers up. Let's give him 19 over one. Not worried about it. We have Henley at linebacker. We have Mobley at edge. JT Woods. JT Woods wants to buy in. Again, still he hasn't even really regressed yet. So we'll get him on a two year deal. Uh, Joey, uh, definitely want Isaiah George for sure. Cause he's 25 years old with the dev trait. I forgot to make a tough call. I mean, for, you know what? We're going to wait until we get Herbert across the line and then we can reassess, but we're definitely going to be losing some talent this year, which adds a lot more pressure to get that fifth Super Bowl. So, uh, I just simmed a game. We won. All right. We beat, uh, Perfect. Perfect. I can't even think here's what this 11 catches, 330, 335 yards, four touchdowns. 335 yards, four touchdowns. Sim Michael Clark, three, 335 yards. And like, I guess he hasn't been doing that all year because look at the stats. He's like right in line with Jamar Chase. So like that was just an insane game. Holy, what? I right, will come back to the table with Justin Herbert. We're gonna give him $143 million, a significant jump up from his previous contract and he needs still more money, huh? Give him another $5 million. That's what it took to get it across the line for Justin Herbert, which wasn't like insane, but definitely wasn't ideal. Uh, we got Isaiah George. I just wanna see if we can get him right here quickly on a five-year deal. Hopefully he doesn't lose that dev trade. We have Joey Bosa, who's still one of the premier pass rushers in the league. We'll get him on a one-year deal. And as you can see, with our available salary cap, Banks for sure is gone. Might might be able to get Henley once we get the off-season like, influx of cap.
but it's going to be the end of the line. Mobley, I mean, Mobley, he has not lived up to his rating. He was a superstar. Uh, he's been kind of average. Johnny Banks has been solid. He's had a nice career for He's a guy that you can count on two, three interceptions a year. But I, I do think once we get to that final negotiation window before free agency, we should be able to at least extend a reasonable offer to Henley to try to get him to stay here in the building. Because obviously he was still a member of that very first draft class that we started with. At the end of the 2031 season, I don't even know if we can be possible because we got this fucking Chiefs team staring us in the face again. Um, well, Michael Clark is a legend. Needs to be said. He's got to go down as a legend. Just Herbert played well. 4,800 yards, 41 touchdowns. You love seeing that. 13 and 13 from Murphy. So, like, our, our passing offense numbers have gone up and our rushing numbers still remain at a high level. But Michael Clark, the best wide receiver I've ever drafted, arguably the best player I've ever drafted, also is disgusting in the sim. 134 catches, 1,900 yards, 16 touchdowns for this rookie. It's always going to be like one of those things, no matter how long this rebuild goes, to see this guy's career, if he keeps this place, I, I think it could be kind of funny to see. Uh, rest of the number's not too bad. Everyone definitely took a step back, but welcome to the show. Welcome to the Michael Clark Show. Diane Henley, another great year, 120 tackles, three interceptions, 11 sacks, Joey Bosa, nine from Mobley. Of course, Mobley has his finally most productive season when I can't afford to pay him. Isn't that convenient? Uh, interception number solid. Yearly awards MVP goes to Damon Rowe, Justin Herbert runner-up for the MVP. But maybe we're going to have enough this year to top down... Old Mahomes there. Mahomes and Justin Jefferson in Kansas City. Michael Clark easily is going to be offensive uh, player of the year. Easy. He's going to be easy offensive rookie of the year. Easy. Justin Herbert, quarterback of the year. Love seeing that. Michael Clark, wide receiver of the year. Zion Johnson, lineman of the year. Now, I would have... Hey, you know what? Whatever. It's going to be probably a nice XP boost. Because he's already on the superstar dev. So, maybe if, like, beggars could be choosers, if you're going to give that... To anybody on our team, maybe get to someone that didn't have a dev trait, but my God, the Michael Clark show, the Justin Herbert show. Is that enough to topple a 9-8 and eight Chiefs team that is just always going to be a thorn? And yes, sir, 45-31, we exercise our past demons. That's twice the Chiefs have won and done to us. Not this year. Look at that. Three interceptions on Mahomes. Justin Herbert had a clean game. We ran the ball well. Michael Clark, on, no one has an answer. I mean, honestly, when you look at that, though, Michael Clark, 6'6", 221. Our wide receiver, too, Quentin Johnson, 6'4", 212. Not a lot of teams are going to match up well against that. Got two sacks there. We got our two picks, Deshaun Harper. One from Deontay Banks and what is going to be his final year as a Charger. Trying to go out on top. Feeling pretty good, man. What do we got next? The Miami Dolphins in the Divisional. Well, truth be told, I'm not overly paying attention to what everyone else is doing, but the Dolphins quarterback has been very good. Obviously, you can tell he's a 9-9 X-Factor, but he's been a guy that's, like, legit been excellent. We have the number one offense, top 10 defense. They have the number two offense, a little bit better defense. So this might be, like, the battle of the two best teams in the NFL right now. Winner of this is probably going to be favorites to go on and win a Super Bowl, and we dump 35 points on the Dolphins' head here. 35-24 when push comes to shove. Look at that, Herbert. Three touchdowns. We ran the ball well. Johnson with the hat trick. Things you love to see. And now standing between us and another Super Bowl is Trevor Lawrence and a pretty good Jags team. Top 10 offense, top 10 defense. I didn't even see we had a player of the week, Justin Herbert. All right, Justin Herbert's been on fire. This is, you know, I'm, I'm happy that after we just had to barter to try to get him to sign on for three more years, he's, he's justifying the excessive amount of money. And we win an ugly one, 21-14. Going to the Super Bowl, we're going to hop in here, sit front row as we go and chase Super Bowl win number five of seven against a nine and eight Saints team that's not particularly good. It's got to be ours. Michael Clark before the Super Bowl gets to just a casual three skill point upgrade. We probably could just funnel these all into Playmaker at this point, but yeah, why not? We'll make him a scheme fit. Uh, these are all these are all nice at yeah screw let's give him one physical here because that's let's be honest six six he needs to be a 99 fifth got a nice plus three catching just an absolute monster dude what receptions leader wide receiver of the year offensive rookie of the year offensive player of the year the goat he's got to be goaded it's the 2031 super bowl chargers saints game that the chargers 
kind of high assing it around here. Maybe we're not taking the Saints fully seriously because they should not be on our level. But they're, they're being a little bit of a stickler. Their defense is showing up. We were able to get the first touchdown of the game. Our defense is showing up as well, only giving up three so far. They do get a touchdown to end the first half. They get 14 points to end the first half. So now is what better time than ever? Hop in here. Let's find this Clark guy. And let's get after it. I'm on, baby. I'm on, baby. We get tax, we get pummeled. But 6'6 six, six with, I don't even know where he's at, 97 speed. He's Megatron. We got Megatron reincarnated. That's always going to be a great mismatch that we want to use in our favor. Our defense, man, is just struggling a little bit. So we're going to keep coming in here on the sticks because the more that I can play with this monster, the more I just, I just want to do it. Uh, we'll go inside switch. He's lined up in the slot here. A lot of star talent, though. Definitely the strong side of the secondary for the New Orleans Saints. We'll float it up. He'll make the grab. He'll literally be almost impossible cheat code-esque to bring down and give us excellent starting field position to kick off the fourth. Let's see if we can let the Sim here actually get these guys in the end zone, which they do, 21-24, but I mean, our defense just... Okay, we get the instant touchdown. We need one stop, fellas. We get the stop. And you're going to damn right give me a chance to throw verse to this monster. Right bumper, close our eyes, hit the Y button. Now, there might be a question of scoring too fast. Perfect. Might have been good to run that one under a minute. We'll see what the boys can do. Come on, fellas. I'll come and play some defense. We got both. This could be the end for Bosa. This might be what we needed. A nice little final moment. Bosa's likely going to retire. And we get home with the sack. It's going to go down as a half sack. But might be the biggest play of the Super Bowl. Come on, Nick. Joey. Joey. Whatever one you are, you're both freaks of nature. Wins on the swim move. He throws it in the middle. There's a... I don't know what that's going to be. That better not be rough on the passer. Come back for holding. Fuck. We get this engage eight. Who's running that? Almost let them score. Let me get another shot to uh, our freak of nature uncoverable player. But let's see if we can get a sack here. Bosa, it's best on best. I think that's Ryan Ramchek. We're going up against. All right. Just do exactly what we just did. And we're going to get our fifth Super Bowl. Four verts. You, like, just put the whole defense on him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close my eyes. I'm going to hit right bumper. I'm going to hit Y. He's going to give me a touchdown. And we're going to get another Super Bowl here. He actually gets jammed at the line. He makes the grab. Okay. Wasn't quite a touchdown. A little bit more work. Why, what are we doing going? F Absolutely not. We are not kicking the field goal. Nine seconds to go. Give me at least one more shot. How do you stop that? Give me my another Super Bowl. Super Bowl. And you know what? I don't even care who's getting the MVP. I'm telling you right now. It's Michael Clark. It's the guy that literally is a cheat code and catches everything. With his huge sack, Joey Boja does decide to go out on top. Retires after 16 seasons. Like 180-some total sacks. Definitely in, you know, top 10 all time. Hell of a career. Also gives us some additional salary cap to try to negotiate and not lose all of it. First up, it's Henley, our middle linebacker, leader of the defense. Been here for this entire run. Perfect. Don't really want to let him up. Mobley, our edge rusher, actually honestly becomes a lot more important to re-sign here. We'll give him the four-year deal. That bar went way up. He just wanted to be our he just wanted to be the guy. He just wanted to be the premier pass rusher. Saw the opportunity. Now, Henley, I would like to keep him, but I don't really want to overpay. We'll round this up. We'll go. 40 and a half mil. He wants to bounce. So if he's going to bounce, why don't we try to get my banks back here for one year? Keep our elite secondary right where we want it. And leaves us really going towards the draft. Need to find a linebacker to replace Henley. 
We did our homework on the linebackers here. Uh, it looks like it's about four deep. Lorenzo Allen. I'm a little scared about that Z. I'd say Ron Matthews is my top player. Maybe maybe you might try to go up and get him if Allen comes off the board early. Uh, Robbie Carmichael should be available. Double Bs. But I, I think Ron Matthews is the guy. I mean, massive shoes to fill. We got to try and, and replace a superstar linebacker that's been very reliable for like 100 tackles to do everything. Matthews right now is projected to go 30th. And, you know, we don't have we don't have a first round pick. So we'd have to, you know, manage second rounds, try to potentially move up, or we just sit where we're at and try to get that linebacker Carmichael in the second round. The Rams look like they're interested in a linebacker. So I'm gonna make sure they don't get the one that we want. So I'm trading our second and third round pick this year to give up a couple spots here in the second round so that we can get the only linebacker that looks like he might have a chance to start for us this year as we look for Super Bowl number six. And that is Robbie Carmichael. Three Bs, don't know what the pursuit is. 6'2", 233, pretty good combine. Not S tier, but good. Great acceleration, Ely jumping, great speed, great strength. Really solid player, cross board. That's a lot better than expected. 90 acceleration, 89 speed. Wasn't he run like a 4'6"? Take a look at our draft read. I'll take a 74 hidden dev linebacker. I don't I don't think the other guys even ahead of him were probably much better. Let's look at some of these guys. Let's look at the guys who went in the first round. Middle linebackers. Definitely a couple went. We got Lorenzo Allen, 71. He was the guy that had like the, like the D zone coverage. Wasn't, wasn't ever really interested in him. But more so down there at the bottom, we were very much looking at Ron Matthews, 74. So the same rating, no depth traits. So we got the best, ah, the rich get richer. We are now into year 10, the 2032 season. So here's a little recap. Where's our squad looking like? Justin Herbert, 95 X Factor. Murphy, 99 X Factor. Michael Clark, the best wide receiver. Maybe ever seen 94. Might as well be a 99. We got Quentin Johnson, 94. Gentry, 91. Warner, 99. We got Makai back to Zion Johnson, Wolf Sawyer, and Slater. Still a unit that is the best and most feared in the NFL. Defensively, we've had some training, you know, guys move on, guys adjust, all so, you know, so on and so forth. Have a little bit of a dent in our armor. Our team's been complete, but we weren't really able to replace Bosa. Didn't have the salary to do so. So we're going to need Mobley. Wait, I mean, it's not going to be killer because you can kind of avoid that if we're not running a lot of base, running a lot of subsets where you can have, you know, Rainey and Mobley be our primary pass rusher. So I'm not overly worried, but you are starting to see, like, our complete team. You know, Harper was an X-Factor. Now he's down to a star. And, 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 you know, these guys are regressing. They're getting up there in age a little bit. But luckily, the end is almost near. We only need two more Super Bowls to wrap up this the video. And I think that this squad here, even if we have to hold them on with duct tape, should be enough to get us to a Super Bowl, and I think, yeah, I'm not worried about it. Not worried about it one damn bit. Would you believe it if I said my team started 0-7? Because my team that's 99 over 99 offense, 92 defense, was 0-7. We're on a little bit of a three-game win streak. I, I, I don't know. I, I honestly should have just, I was shocked. I should have just honestly started hit record right when I saw that we were 0-7. Because you probably wouldn't believe me. But I'm in shock. What the fuck? We're defending Super Bowl champions, dude. Um for our contracts, we gotta we, I think this is gonna be the year we gotta prioritize the young guys. Prioritize the key players. We got like Selvi gotta get a contract. Um 38 mil remaining. Asante on a one year. I mean, 17 mil on a one year for a guard. That's a little rich, considering we do have some depth at the position. Four years for Quentin Johnson. I mean, he's again, no interest whatsoever in even re-signing him. Like, in him, in him re-signing here. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of turnover. And we're probably not even going to make the playoffs. Perfect. Even though we went 9-1 and one down the stretch, our 0-7 start gets us 9-8. It didn't make the playoffs, man. Um, I mean, Herbert's up there in age, I guess. Like, are we hitting that wall? Murphy had a solid year. Michael Clark, unstoppable. Again, 128 catches, 79 yards, 12 tutties. Defense was definitely missing Bosa. Two it below two, 10 and a half. Like, we didn't have any sacks. Deshaun Harper was six picks. Love seeing that. But what an absolute mulligan of a year where we are losing 
This this is like my biggest fear. Like this is like the last year I think we had to take to get our final Super Bowl with the Detroit Lions in the first zero rings, seven rings video. I think we're almost like on the brink of like we got to do another reboot. Like how many six more years? We're gonna get two more rings. And look at what we have available. I'm. I would say we did get a lot more interest out of Zion Johnson here. But that's just too much money with our limited cap for a guard. I, I feel like we have some depth across the offense. I would have loved Quinton Johnson to be the player that got more interest because he's the guy I most would like to re-sign. Kai back to we can move on. I, I think all things considered with 24 mil, get Deontay Banks back here on a one-year, try to keep our secondary, and then you know, hopefully our offensive line can survive and we can find another weapon in the draft. We're going to have a first-round pick this year. We're going to do damage with that. We're going to have a, our highest pick of this entire rebuild now. Got to do damage with it. But for Quentin Johnson, we'll give him a nice little farewell here. Part of that first draft class. Finishes his career with the Chargers. 839 receptions, 11,000 yards, 86 touchdowns. Pretty damn good career. We went from having a 97 offense, 94 defense to 92 offense, 91 defense. I guess perspective is everything because these numbers still across the board are more than enough to be considered Super Bowl favorites. But stings. We can't. We're not going to. We can't afford to sign anybody in free. We have to. The only way we're getting better is through the draft. And we are going into the draft. We can shuffle some pieces around the offensive line. Wakefield can go into guard. But we're going to be going into this draft. We need a right guard. We need a right tackle with some upside. You know, we might want a wide receiver. No, not saying it's a must. But the right-hand side of our offensive line. You look at the defense. We need a Bosa replacement at pass rusher. And it's going to be tough. Like, I feel like we could probably... We're going to get... Either a tackle or a pass rusher in the first, and we might be able to find a nice value guard later on. Do you know what? We have this Peterson guy. He's kind of been rotting away on our bench. He was a first-round center. The only reason why I even see this is because we had to pick up his fifth-year option, which I declined. But he's like, you know, he's a 78. Like, that might be enough cover to eliminate guard for the time. Like, that's up to a seven. That's not a bad placeholder right now. So now we just have to get, arguably, outside of quarterback, the two hardest positions to draft, edge rusher and tackle. So we got the 15th pick in the first round. Tackle and edge are the two positions that I want to look at. And we have a tackle that I do like here in Marcus Kelly. Double A, double B. Doesn't look elite, but we also don't really have an elite pick. He skipped the combine, which is interesting. Had the second most bench press reps. He looks like a solid pick. It does look like it is a pretty weak class for edge rusher. Stand up edge rusher. Because like all the DNs, for the most part, are like 3-4 defensive ends. And then when you look at the stand-up players, doesn't get a whole lot better. Like, we have Brennan Jansen, who the only thing we got here is a pursuit. Combine, not particularly good. On the other side, Dion Burke is the only other option, and we got a pursuit. And we don't really know much more about the rest of the... And the Combine's also not particularly good. So I'm almost thinking, when in doubt, we kind of go BPA, which... There's some nice corners here. Sidney Logan, 6'2". A, double B, and a C. Combine looks pretty solid. Yeah. I think we just go to the tackle, man. We'll just grab the tackle. Worst case, I mean, just give me a dev trait. He's probably going to be like 70 with a dev, but we can throw that guy at right tackle. Then we'll just kind of go BPA. It can never hurt. Dress in the front three here. We got Devin Sharp with his 40 reps. First in the bench. Bring him in. Get some youth there on the D-line. With that, he's a D-end in our scheme. Right on a little bit of roll. Third pick. We get a guard. Jaden Noel. 6'4". Also could potentially play on the outside. But likely could just honestly be our right guard. We don't want to use that center. We didn't even pick up the fifth-year option. Get a guy on the field right now that we're going to have four or five years of development with. And the draft recap looks pretty solid, especially our first three picks that I really liked. Kelly, 73. He's going to be our right tackle. We got Sharp, just a depth player, 74. He's going to move to DN. Rating might go up or down a little bit. Noel, 74, hidden dev. We got a 70 burner late. Just a nice depth there. I, I'm really happy with this draft class, all things considered. Even though there was an, not really an edge rusher that was worth drafting. This is now the 2033 season. I just want to give my fellas here a little pep talk, guys. Hey, for fuck's sakes, don't go 0 and 7 to start the year. All right, we don't got, we don't know how many more of these we got left. Figure it out. Noel gets to start at right guard. We got a right guard, brand new right tackle, right hand side. We did our best that we can to kind of put that all together. It's still going to be the X factors carrying the load for the offense. Defensively, didn't get that pass rusher, but I think we'll be able to survive again with Rainey and Mobley primarily coming off the edge there. 
Uh, secondary, Harper's back up to a superstar dev after getting six interceptions last season. Come on, boys. Let's get that six Super Bowl. So we're getting, maybe year 10's just the random year. It's the new year three in these longer videos because we were 0-7 midway point last year. This year, 7-0, undefeated, number two offense, number five defense, kind of what we're expecting out of this squad. Looking at where we want to just focus here real quick, actually. You know what, while we're here, we're going to go corner. Just got our secondaries getting kind of old. So we'll prior toys getting some extra information there on the secondary players. We're looking at some contracts. I have no idea where our salary cap is. 86 mil is not bad. We got Ramon McAllister, the best kicker in the history of the NFL. I'm just assuming that that's the case. Probably not, though. I haven't seen him win many awards. Uh, 81 million bucks remaining. This actually might be like a little bit of like a nice year. Nice little reset. Um, I mean, JT Woods, one-year deal. We don't really have a replacement in place, so we could keep him. He's still playing at a decent level. Same with our secondary, man. If we can just keep getting these guys while we don't have to, you know, cr spend crazy money on the open market, keep them in-house. Uh, there's a lot worse things you could do. We have Grant Wolf here at center. I don't really want to overpay for a center given, given their value, but we'll see. Three years, 27 mil. He needs more money, so I guess we're getting a brand new center because I'm not getting bent over by a center. Two below two, looking for a two-year deal. If he takes that, sure. If not... Might need to move on from the veteran who's been here since he was drafted out of USC. The 2033 season, we have a chance to break even. As it stands right now, we are 1-2 against the Chiefs in the playoffs. Look at that. They just got a Kelsey regen there. Eric Gilkey, X-Factor at tight end. We're the number three offense, number 10 defense in the NFL. They're top five pretty much. Offense and defense, sixth offense, fifth. But look at that, man. Justin Herbert aging like a fine wine. Year 13. 5K yards passing, 49 times. He's MVP. He's the guy. He's him right now. Michael Clark is also him. The God, Michael. Since he's come in, 6'6", 221. Megatron, 2.0. It's almost like, let's see the career of this guy, honestly, at this point. And he's on a and he's, he's literally, it's like, if you took Megatron and, like, Mike Evans and you combine them, that is your Mike Evans... Regen. Taylor Selvey led the team 127 tackles, 17 sacks. Elijah Rainey, 12 from Tui Pelotu, 10 and a half from Mobley. So I, I definitely think, we're, you know what? We'll probably go back to the table for Tui Pelotu with that kind of year. Uh, I will overpay a little bit. Four picks from Asante Samuel Jr. Justin Herbert is the league MVP. Things you love to see. Mahomes still doing. But look, he's regressing now. He's down to a 91. Changing the guard. Michael Clark, Offensive Player of the Year. Justin Herbert, quarterback of the year. Michael Clark, wide receiver of the year. Not much going to the defense. Ramon McAllister, I think that's his third or fourth kicker of the year award since he has been here. But all that will be for naught if we can't knock off the Kansas City Chiefs. Break even 2-2 two and two in do or die. Win or go home playoff games. And we're able to do that 27-20. Moving on to the divisional round here against the 10-7 and seven Steelers. I was going to like suggest maybe there's something to do with like if you're the home team or the away team, but I don't think it matters because I think that both times we've lost to the Chiefs, we've been the home team. We've been the home team pretty much every year, except I don't I don't even know. I think we were we've we, all the times we've faced Kansas City in the playoffs, we have been the home team. But anyways, moving on, we broke even there. And Epsex is the Steelers, and we cooked them 42 to 24. Justin Herbert, the MVP, playing like it. 242 yards, two touchdowns, ran the ball. He also had two rushing touchdowns. There you go, kid, get involved. He's an athlete, Michael Clark. Two to, uh, you know, these are the stars. The stars are coming out to play here in this playoff run. And if I wasn't deceived, I believe we're taking on the Colts, who had 15 wins, 15 and two? Huh? 92 over, they got, what do they got to go 15 and two? That might be like the best record we've gone up against. So I'm going to give them a little bit of shout out here. They got Suell. Bryce Young, Jonathan Taylor, Dalton Kincaid. A couple real nice generated players. Don't call me the quarterback. We got Derek Carr left tackle. I mean, it's a good team. Better than our team, but it's a good team. Definitely a worthy opponent here in the championship game, but we are on our pursuit for Super Bowl win number six of seven, and we handle business in a very close matchup, 34-31, and we get a rematch of our year five Super Bowl loss against the New York Giants, I can only assume they still have Jalen Hurts. They don't have Saquon Barkley, which they had last time, but I'm going to guess they still have Jalen Hurts as their quarterback. He's, he's up there, man. This might be the last to offer Hurts, and as much as he's going to pay me to do this, 
we might need to send him into retirement on an L because we are the much better team on paper. But they still, you know, hey, they had a top 10 offense. They might be able to hang in there, make things ugly. However, all that being said, there is a chance that we could go 0-2 in this rebuild against the New York Giants in the Super Bowl. They could be our, you know, we're, we're their Patriots. And for whatever reason, they see us in a Super Bowl game, they bring it on. We get the first touchdown of the game. Pretty low scoring right now. Giants able to capitalize there and respond. But we get a touchdown. Trading tutties left, right, center after a low scoring first quarter. Going to the second half, up four. Looks like a turnover force by the Chargers defense. And this, I love it. Looks like it might be a Super Bowl win that we don't have to hop in and have any influence over. It's just our team is the better team, but we don't know. They're able to get the touchdown two-point conversion. We don't get anything. We get the punt. What is going on here? We'll get one play. One shot off here. If they could stop this, they deserve to win the Super Bowl. That, that's, that, that'd be my... My breakdown. If they can stop the MVP to the best wide receiver the NFL has ever seen, give them the damn Super Bowl. We'll take the L, and we'll go into year 12. That was actually probably the best thing that we could have happen. Because that, 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 that didn't work. They jammed him up at the line. They knew it worked. We only need a field goal, but I, I'm not thinking field goals. We're not thinking field goals here whatsoever. We are going... For the touchdown. But also, we might be able to go for the field goal. I don't know. We'll see. Give it to him, man. Fuck. We are the Patriots, and the Giants are 2 0 on us against the Super. I don't, again, just my team fucking underperform. That's the only way to put it. This game should not have been close. We had them beat, and then we just let them get back in the game. Shake my damn head. Honestly. Lost the Super Bowl in a Super Bowl we should have won. JT Woods, Rashawn Slater, and Asante Samuel Jr., who, like, all signed new contracts this year, decide, eh, fuck it, we're out. So my apologies not being able to see the final stats on either one of these guys. Did not expect them whatsoever to retire. However, with the influx of cash, we were able to get Tuli Tupelotu coming off a double-digit sack season to resign. Grant Wolf uh, has been a pain in the ass at center. So, oh, he's pretty damn good, though. We'll franchise tag him for 11 mil. One last spot we have to worry about. And, hey, we're going to actually be able to be active here in free agency. Try to get this team over the hump, back to the Super Bowl, and get number six and seven. Get a free agency. We've got a hell of a role here. Ross Klein, an X-Factor tackle. Very few and far between you find these guys. Uh, that would be our instant plug-and-play at left tackle to replace Rashawn Slater. And I got Steve... Not quarterback Young. The Chief, we can get him in. Strong safety. We'd move him to free safety. And he would be our replacement for JT Woods. So looking for laying both of these guys so we don't have to go into the draft needing multiple things. And we'd have at least getting the tackle, getting the better of the two players. But we're going to be rolling into this draft needing to get JT Woods' his replacement. Needing to get the replacement of Asante Samuel Jr. So knowing that we need corner and safety. Luckily, I had a little bit of foresight to really focus in on scouting the corners this year. So we have some good information um, Grenard looks solid. He's probably like the first corner that like I'm really interested in. Uh, as we work our way down here, we got a nice value here in Johnny Northrup, second, third rounder. He's a first round, second round talent. So that kind of means like we can kind of shift our focus here to safety a little bit. And um, I mean, Schaefer looks solid, but we, we did scout here James Matthews. He has the A power, B tackle, double C's for the coverage. Not too bad, 6'3". But there's a guy I want. Jerron Haskins out of LSU. A tackle, A man, B hit power. 6'1", 205, elite agility, elite jumping, first in the 40-yard dash, first in the three, like this, he's the best guy, that's a guy that's going to be like, you know, 75 minimum, if not because of those athletic traits, for sure a dev trait, so that's the, that's the play that I want to try to get, getting an idea where he's going in mock drafts is a different beast, he is going, hopefully a little bit later, Grenard, that's the top corner I want, he's going at 15, so the safeties are going to be a little bit more attainable. Haskins is going 27. Not that bad. I think I think we can I think we can make that happen. But we'll move up a couple spots, trading our future third this year, third next year. I didn't want to give up that second in case we can get Northrop that corner that we have scouted. But hey, if all these other guys are passing on what I think is probably going to be one of the best players in the draft, 
Let's punish him. Jerron Haskins, please have a dev trait. Welcome to LA. There's your JT Woods replacement. Look at our draft recap. Was unable to get the corner, the good roll that I wanted. But all things considered, as I, I traded out. I, I want future picks. We hit Jerron Haskins, 81. Not a perfect scheme fit. Let's actually convert him right now to free safety. I don't think that's going to affect his rating any bit. It might actually change what we're looking for for a scheme fit. But, no, nah, not at all. Still, he's falling that far. Don't know how, why. How, why? Every other team passed on him. But that is an immediate replacement. And one last thing we need to fix going forward for the team. Like, that's going to be... He's here. That's an anchor for the defense. We'll say, though, we're going to have to hold out for a goldie boy. No X Factor. It's now the 2034 season, and we get start asking ourselves, how many more years of Justin Herbert are we going to get? Are we going to be able to get all seven Super Bowls with Justin Herbert? Because you feel like if he retires before we hit seven, who knows how long it is? Like, this video could be my longest ever. This could be a five-hour rebuild. If we, I'm not stopping until we get seven. But knowing that we went to the Super Bowl last year, just barely lost, tough matchup. Feel optimistic we can get back this year and at least get that sixth one on the board. Because between Justin Herbert, 99 X-Factor running back, 99 best wide receiver in the NFL, we now have a 90 X-Factor tackle. Those don't exist. A 99, we have the best skill position and arguably the best offense in the NFL. No real weakness whatsoever. Maybe you can make the argument we don't have that wide receiver three they're looking for. It. Honestly, I'm probably going to get the tight end uh, involved as they are twins, apparently. Defense has taken a little bit of a step back, but again, I think we can make it all work. Uh, we've been down that secondary edge rush really since Khalil Mack left. So we're going to have to have Mobley and Rainey primarily as our pass rushers or some combination of Mobley, Rainey, and Tui Pelotu. Looking at the secondary, really happy with everything broke down. How Haskins, some of us might have been thinking there's a generational type player as he was an 81 overall out the gate, but just a star dev unveiling his dev trait with our coaching ability so, I mean, not, you know, hey, we've, we've drafted enough X factors. I'm not going to get hung up around that. Still, an outstanding. Anytime you get an 81 overall player starting there, not going to complain about that whatsoever. And I think our secondary, while it's not S tier like it has been for the majority of this rebuild, we still have Deontay Banks, we still have Deshaun Harper, and I think we have more than enough talent to get back and get that six ring this season. Not a bad start to year number 12. Undefeated 7-0. Chiefs kind of stick. Raiders are hanging tough with us, though, at 6-1. Let's take a look at some contracts. What do we got? 141 mil. And it looks like Justin Herbert is at a place where he just wants to take it one year at a time, and he's going to make us absolutely pay for it. But I don't really want to mess around too, too much with the franchise. I, I feel like I want him to be our guy start to finish. So we are going to pay him hefty upgrade over what they're suggesting we're getting a one year 50 no one's gonna pay you more than 50 million dollars god damn it greedy okay we'll get elijah we'll get everyone else while we kind of wait on that one uh we have gentry Ooh, that's actually kind of expensive i think we you know for for how much this why this this offense really runs through one guy uh i very much we get by i think with a committee and i don't think 80 million dollars for a 30 year old wide receiver is going to be in our best interest. We got Wakefield here, just in case this rebuild goes on forever. We'll get him onto an incredibly reasonable five-year contract. Uh, Grant Wolf, he's kind of been a pain in our ass as well in terms of re-signing him. We've had him on play on the franchise tag. He wants more money. He's kind of being an asshole about it. But ultimately, we just got to get Herbert to sign on the contract here for one more year. So to 50, we'll bump it up to 52 and a half. Hey, here we go. We got one more year. Don't retire on me. Please, don't. And then of year 12, it is our best record through 12 seasons. We come 15 and 2, the one seed in the AFC, primed to make amends for last year's Super Bowl loss and just, just go off. Justin Herbert, 4,700 yards, 48 touchdowns, leading the league to seven interceptions. 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns for Johnny Murphy. Great numbers. Michael Clark just continues to be an absolute cheat code. 129 receptions, 1,800 yards, 25 tutties, 1,000 for Gentry. Who's about to hit free agency? I mean, I'd say the only disappointing thing is like the fact that we have a 99 tight end, not getting soup as involved as I would have, you know, kind of hope him to. Carmichael and Selby both going over 100 tackles. We have 12 sacks from Mobley, 11 and a half, two below to 11 from Rainey. So I said, but we don't have like a complete edge rushing group. We can rely on these three, three guys to really be consistent. Uh, Deshaun Harper leading the team with three interceptions. Yearly awards MVP goes to Bryce Young, Justin Herbert, the runner up there. Michael Clark, the best wide receiver in the history of Madden 23. Three, 
just continues to be absolutely unstoppable. The rest of the awards, we got Michael Clark, wide receiver of the year. It's kind of him. Hey, Mobley gets linebacker. That could be a late return to a superstar dev for him as we look to make it seven. But let's not start thinking about seven before we get number six. We are the favorites, overwhelmingly, to go on and get a Super Bowl this season. And it starts here against a 10-7 and seven Jag squad. And peeping them, I mean, they got a good defense, top three defense. But offensively, I just don't think they're going to have enough to compete with us. Then again, our defense is not particularly strong either. I think we're, what, 11th, which is not bad. And we have a top 10 rushing defense, but we have the best offense in the NFL. And we handle up 35-28. Next up is the Houston Texans in the championship game. Another Super Bowl appearance on the line here. The Texans present a much more challenging offense. Number two ranked offense, the number one passing offense. They have a top five rushing defense. So it's going to take a complete effort. To get back to the Super Bowl, make it back-to-back -back Super Bowl appearances, three Super Bowl appearances in four seasons, and that is exactly what we do. Low-scoring game, 21-16, but it sets up a Super Bowl matchup. Thankfully, not against the Giants. This time, it is against the 12-5 Atlanta Falcons. Still have Kyle Pitts doing their thing. They have the number six offense, number two defense in the NFL. This is, this, I don't know, this game might be tougher than I'm thinking it is right now. Come on, man. We need number six. I'm almost need to win the last, like this season and next season. I feel like we only have two more years. Maybe a Justin Herbert left. Let's maximize the potential. We get the opening touchdown of this game, which is nice. We're going to the red zone. Let's hop in. I think we might need to play a little bit. I got. We got to get Super Bowl six here in this game. We got third and one. Let's go get a little slant cheese here potentially. We got Clark unstoppable. We're gonna line him up against a linebacker. Should be a favorable matchup. Which you look at right there, wide open. Over this, he doesn't even need to look. Blind catch, Michael Clark. He's like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't even need to look. That's that's how he's making it more challenging for himself at that point. We go for it on fourth down in the sim. Get another touchdown up 21 7. This is similar to last year's Super Bowl, even if we get points here. We were up big in the first half. Really, up, we were up big for pretty much most of the game to the fourth. And they got just touchdown, touchdown. And it was all New York Giants, like kind of how it's shaping up here. But if we get points on this drive, which we do, look, they get the instant touchdown. They're not going away. Why are we choking this again? Back-to-back -back years, we have been up multiple scores in the second half, and we're fucking blowing it. 39 seconds to go. We got X. That's a ridiculous throw. That's roughing the passer on top of it. Probably if we hit X instead of A, that is gone for a touchdown. But that is a big-time catch. An additional 15 onto that, which should put us into field goal range at minimum. And I'm going to see if we can kind of sim this one out so it's not really a C4-influenced win if we get the dub. And we do kick the field goal. Hey, there we go. That's what we need. Super Bowl number six. Very little in terms of me having to hop on. Justin Herbert. Hope, you know what? You almost hope this is not the, the tipping point for him to retire. We need you to come back for one year. We're kind of doing something. As you can only assume that out of the six Super Bowls, Justin Herbert's not, if not got six, he's got at least five Super Bowl MVPs during that time. Another outstanding performance. Michael Clark, 10 catches, 208 yards. The greatest Madden wide receiver ever. And just in case he decides to retire, this is where Justin Herbert stands. Six Super Bowls, 72,000 yards passing, 582 total touchdowns to 149 picks. Uh, Johnny Murphy's on 9,100 yards, over 100 tutties. 10K for Brandon Gentry. We're just letting walk. Michael Clark, he's going to be the greatest wide receiver of all time, honestly. It's it's almost just... If this if I wasn't worried about this video going three hours, if I wanted to see the full career of this guy, uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, Deshaun Harper on 26 picks, which... Honestly, it's like the most interceptions I've had in a rebuild for a, for a single player. We're sitting on 92 sacks for Tua Peloto, 89 for Rainey, 56 for Dorian Mobley. But I do actually want to see where Herbert is for the career passing numbers. He is right now just outside the top five in passing yards. I think if he returns for one more year, might actually have a chance to catch Josh Allen. Definitely will be able to catch Joe Burrow to get in that top five. Passing touchdowns, Justin Herbert just... Uh, just inside there, I, you know, again, coming back for one more year. Definitely can get into conversation of Rodgers and Joe Burrow. Probably not Mahomes or Brady. But you never know. He could just keep on playing and never retire. And that would be pretty cool. So we're free agency. I'm, I'm going to try to be a little aggressive. We had a nice amount of salary cap, like 70 million bucks. 
Uh, initially said we're not going to pay Gentry, but I need a wide receiver two and a three. I'm not going to be able to find that in the draft. Plus, he's had a ridiculous career. That's over 10,000 yards. So we'll see if we can bring him back. I got Mike Whitfield. He could come in potentially as an edge rusher, 25 years old, 79. And look at this. Deontrez Stingley, X-Factor corner, just kind of sitting there. Very affordable. Like under $20 million for four years. I don't really know how that happened. But I'm going to jump all over that contract. So we get three really, really nice players and kind of go into this draft looking for BPA. Maybe, dare I say, a Herbert successor, if that's the best player available for us. For this draft, I'm actually looking at a couple different, like, BPAs. Um, considered Sheldon Royster here. But because we got that X-Factor corner in free agency, I don't know how big of a need that is. I really like to look at this Ezekiel Jefferson, third round. But that's, that's a little rich for my blood. Uh, Floyd Small, the D tackle. It's really different between Floyd Small, 6'4", 313, A tackle, B power move. Don't know the finesse move. C block shed. Elite acceleration. Pretty good everything else uh, that you're looking for. But my question, just, just throwing it out there, is we got this guy, Russell Bozeman. Second, third round. We got A hit power, A man coverage. He's 225 pounds. So like, I feel like this is a guy... Elite agility, great speed. Maybe, maybe he's not gonna, a good enough athlete. That you could, you could classify as a safety and a linebacker. Get two positions potentially here uh, that we may want to look at improving. Uh, it's a tough one, man. I guess when in doubt, we'll go with the slightly better athlete of the two, which is D tackle Floyd Small. Damn. Second round, we're gonna get Ezekiel Jefferson, double A and a B, elite jumping, change direction, and acceleration. Looks like a great athlete. A great linebacker to add to our core. Take a look at the draft recap. Floyd's ball, 73. Not a brutal rating, especially for the last pick of the first round normal dev. Uh, Jefferson here, 70 with a hidden dev at that linebacker spot. A nice little 72 fullback late. But just out of curiosity, say, because I gassed him up, I think, believe it would have went in the second round. I want to see what that safety was. First strong safety. Wasn't Tyler good in 77? How did I, I didn't even see that guy. Russell Bozeman, 77 as well. Normal dev. So, you know, no really, no, you know, not further ahead, not further behind is what it is. The year is 2035 and we are embarking on what is potentially the greatest season for the greatest franchise. If we can get that seventh Super Bowl, who knows if it's the last to rob Justin Herbert, who is looking to become top five all time in major stats and Super Bowl trophies, right? You get up there with Brady, old Tom Brady, at least trying his best to. Uh, we're the best wide receiver in the NFL. And looking at this, man, just no weaknesses on the offense. Maybe outside of a slot wide receiver. On the defense, zero weakness. Cleaned it up. We got a pass rusher. We got depth at linebacker. Our corners are great. We bring in a new X Factor just for free. No, I guess the rest of the league just didn't want them. Definitely not our most overpowered team, but definitely a team. And also, we got to shout out, we have the best freaking kicker in the NFL. I, I think definitely a team good enough to get that seventh Super Bowl. Let's make history. Let's go. Midway point of the 13th season, year 2035. Look at some contracts here in case we can't seal the deal here. We got Michael Clark. Uh, I've never wanted to had to pay, like, just a blank check. Whatever it's going to cost for you to stay here, that is what I'm willing to pay. This is actually going to be a very expensive free agency period. We're going to uh, Robbie Carmichael. We'll get him signed. Some of the guys are going to be uh, easier to afford. We have Deshaun Harper, legendary corner here. Found to become the, the greatest shutdown corner in the history of the Chargers. We have Deontay Banks, who just keeps signing one new deals, and I'll keep bringing him back because he's playing at a very high level. We have two people out. I feel like that's kind of a cutoff. He's been solid. His production, I mean, if we'll take this one year deal, I'm not going to worry about it, which he does. He's been a guy that, even though he's you know, dipping in rating just a little bit, still been able to get close to double digit sacks all the time. We have uh, Dorian Mobley, become our new premier pass rusher. We'll get him signed on for the next three years. And really, it's just down to the big two here. We have Justin Herbert, who, I mean, honestly, at this point, it's just like, do I just franchise tag him? This, like, the franchise tag's probably not going to be a lot more than this. We want to do right by our quarterback. So we'll go up to nine. We'll go up to 20. We'll go 27. One year, 46. God damn it. Greedy. Right, we went player friendly on Michael Clark, able to get him signed on the dotted line. Now it's just down to Justin Herbert. We have $13 million remaining. I don't know why he's being such an asshole about this because clearly you're in the best situation. But we'll go one year, 50 mil. No one's paying you more than that. All right, I think this is what we gave him last year, 52 and a half. Yeah, right, buddy. Franchise tag all the way. Bet. 
We finished the season 13 and 4 atop the AFC West, and this is a big time matchup. We have the 8 and 9 Chiefs, so they go below 500. We are 2 and 2 playing the Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs, which is maybe even more impressive than having six Super Bowl wins, to be completely honest with you. So, if we have to go another year, things could get ugly with Justin Herbert, who is still playing at a very high level. Full kudos to him 4,600 yards, 39 touchdowns, only five picks. Great year out of Johnny Murphy, maybe his best year yet 1,400 yards, 18 touchdowns. Michael Clark just doing Michael Clark things defensively. Selvi leads the team 125 tackles, 12, 17 sacks from Elijah Rainey, 14 half, two weeks below two, 12 and a half from Dorian Mobley, three picks. Deontay Banks, Harper with two. Yearly awards MVP goes to Brian Richardson with Justin Herbert coming in at number six. Michael Clark, Offensive Player of the Year. It's because he just, it just is what it is. Justin Herbert gets quarterback of the year. Michael Clark, wide receiver of the year. Dorian Mobley, linebacker of the year, which likely will be an X factor for him if we can get to the Super Bowl. But there's no, got to get over this gigantic hurdle right away here. Year 13, the Chiefs stand away, and we're able to not only defeat them, to go 3-2 and two all time in a game that Selvi, our leader of our linebacking core, gets defensive player of the week. But anyway, we, got, we went 13-4. We weren't the one seed? Who are the big dogs right now? 15 to Dolphins. Okay. Hmm. We've met them before in the playoffs. Interesting. Well, hopefully we can meet them in the championship and see truly who the best team is in the AFC. But first we have to handle the Pittsburgh Steelers, which we do. 38 to 35. And they actually get upset by the Jags. Dolphins don't mean it. Justin Herbert, five touchdowns. Mobley with three sacks. And our best players came to show out, setting up a big-time matchup in the AFC championship game this one is jacksonville with their number three offense number five defense against the chargers with their number six offense number one defense somehow even though we have the 30th passing defense 11th rushing defense we give up the fewest points per game we bend we do not break here in a big time conference championship game we are the home team so advantage chargers if you had to ask me and it is just another 30 bomb another player of the week performance it is again herbert and Mobley, copy, paste, four touchdowns for Justin Herbert, two sacks for Mobley, five sacks in two games, setting up a Super Bowl matchup against the Green Bay Packers, an opportunity against one of the most historic franchises in the history of the league in Green Bay for us to become the franchise in the NFL with our seventh Super Bowl. They got the number two offense. That's all they got going for them. We play good defense. We score our points. We're averaging like 30 we're going to get this thing over here that right now. Let's make history, man. This is my, probably my longest video ever. I don't think I've ever played Madden in the 2035. So let's finish this one off right. Get this Super Bowl. We have the best quarterback, best wide receiver. There's just no way they can compete with us. And our defense is doing the job. Our offense is not. They have like a 20th ranked defense in the NFL. So I think it might be time here. Let's let's see what they have. Do they? Do they can they really hang with Michael Clark? Who we got line? There's no more Jair Alexander. They had their best corner on Weiss. Let's see if we can get a shot off here. You got him beat. We can throw this up into the outside. That is a touchdown. For, uh, yeah. Like he's like a golden ticket for those of you that play Ultimate Team. He, but it's in franchise mode. But our team desperately needed that score because we cannot get out of neutral here on offense. How do we only have seven points, dude? Like, if I have to, I'd have no shame, honestly, if I have to score all of our points because that is just mean my team is... Like, I'm just getting robbed. There's no way my team should be this bad against a defense that is not that good. And we're going to try and get this to Clark. He gets separation, splits the two defensive backs, goes through an arm tackle, and sets us up for a prime position to cap this drive off. We need six yards. I, come on. Trust my, my offensive 99s to get that one yard. Defense can't hold up strong. And we got ourselves in a third, like, they're just trying to fucking choke this. This would be, if we don't win this one, and I hate how much I have to have influence, this would probably be our worst one. Nine and eight. They have a number two offense, which is which is good. I can lose, if they're scoring 40 points, I'd believe it. Their defense ain't shit. And we, our offense is barely moving the football unless I'm hopping in and throwing to a human cheat code. So I would love to see a little bit more out of my team. And now I'm also a little worried that I'm going to score too quickly. And Green Bay's going to go get a score. And that's how this thing's going to end. But we got Clark. We're going to throw him up on a jump ball. That is... How is that not P.I.? 
try again. I always feel like now we got to score quickly with the idea that we're probably going to have to score at the end of the game. We're going to scramble out the pocket. There's actually not much there, but we're just going to throw it up to the best player in the league. How's that not P.I. again? We are in field goal range to tie it up, but I'm going to be very hard pressed if they can stop Clark three times. Yeah, right. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, whatever, whatever. You're not stopping us fucking three times. I'll tell you that, buddy. 215, they get the turnover. How we got to capitalize. There we go. I think we got it way closer than it needed to be. Way closer than it needed to be. Well, that is Super Bowl win number seven. We are, I don't even know, two and a half hours into it. Took us three seasons longer than it did our first episode of this series with the uh, Detroit Lions. And I, likely, likely Herbert's final year. Like, we're gonna, either we weren't going to be able to afford him, he's going to leave his disgruntled employee, or retirement. And we're going to finish this video by looking at his stats, because, I mean, all-time. We have, we have a lot of all-time guys. I will say the only person upset is Michael Clark, because that's a guy you want to see what his stats look like. Like... That's a guy that's on pace, like, could catch Jerry Rice's records. Needs to be set. But let's soak this moment in. Justin Herbert, seven Super Bowl rings. We took the Chargers from a franchise with zero to the most successful franchise in the history of the league. Hey, finishing up with our career stats. 76,000 yards passing. Justin Herbert, 200 and, er, 621 touchdowns to 154 interceptions. Uh, he also got almost 3,000 yards rushing, another 29 touchdowns. Johnny Murphy, seven seasons here. His next factor, 10K rushing yards, 119 touchdowns. He's been great. He's been, you know, solidly underrated. He's been a reliable 12 to 1,400 yard double digit touchdown running back. That's all you could ask for. Uh, Gentry, 11,000 yards, 75 touchdowns. But I mean, Michael Clark, five years, he averaged 112 a game, 9,500 yards 94 touchdowns like just doing the math he's not slowing down there's no injuries or anything like that so like he'd have 18 1900 yards and 180 touchdowns by year nine and assuming he plays like a little like greatest wide receiver ever i'm calling it right now greatest wide receiver ever cory warner 7800 yards 80 touchdowns for a one time out the box x factor tight end that we drafted Defensively, Deshaun Harper, our first X-Factor, I believe. Remember we traded up for a corner, got him X-Factor. He was slipping outside the top five. Over 1,000 tackles, 23 TFLs, 28 interceptions. DeAndre Banks spent most of his career with us uh, after IRL anyways, getting drafted by the Giants. He was great. Tui Tui Pelotu spent his whole career with us after getting drafted by the Chargers. 107 sacks. Buck 06, Elijah Rainey, 68 and a half for Dorian Mobley. We got back up to an X-Factor. Uh, Banks with 13 picks, 12 from Hughes, a couple nice players. And I mean, obviously along the way, Asante Samuel, Derwin James, JT Woods was great. Kenneth Murray was awesome. Bosa, Khalil Mack, Khalil Mack with a career resurgence lay here right up to his retirement. He was defensive player of the year and then he retired on like 18 and a half sacks. This was for all things, maybe took a little bit longer than I expected given that for this series, for this premise, you would argue one of the most, like, ready to win of all the teams. You got, like, Cincinnati and probably the Chargers are, like, the top two teams. Buffalo as well. Those are, like, the three that's, like, all right, I could probably get those seven Super Bowls sooner or later. Didn't think it would take as long, but a couple bad Super Bowl losses made us go all the way to 2035. But in the end, we were able to hit it. And that is going to do it for me here today, fellas. Thank you guys very much for watching. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section below what team you want to see next. On the Twitter poll, Minnesota Vikings was razor close coming in second. It would be kind of cool to dip back into the NFC. But I will do whatever team you want to see. The only parameters, obviously, they have yet, have to, have yet to win a Super Bowl. But that will do it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace out. Love you. Have a good one.